Won't go wear no dress until after. Come on now, don't start messing up already. Kevin told you he won't go wear no dress until they offered him the dress and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it. I don't know if you've had this, but I've had people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something I didn't want to do. And what? Just you've been offered. Yeah. Oh, they're in the room. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. That was my way of yes, keeping you. Like, it's open time. Yeah, you want me to keep talking about it? By, by all means, this, we can keep talking about anything. But, <laughs> but don't do it. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. <laughs> all right, y'all. We got a lot to talk about. Everybody hit the like button and let's get into this. I mean, I found every receipt on the internet pertaining to cat williams literally exposing everybody this is even the diss video that cat williams talked about that ended steve harvey's stand-up career so everybody hit the like button everybody come in shout your city out we about to have some fun shout out to cat williams he's going off on everybody all right, so let me bring this back. We're going to run it back and start up. Kevin told you he won't go wear no dress until they offered him the dress, and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But really? you didn't make it. I don't know if you've had this, but I've had people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something I didn't want to do. And what? Just, you've been off. Yeah. Oh, they're in the room. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> Yeah. That was my way of yes, cueing you. Like, it's open time. Yeah, you want me to keep talking about it? By, by all means, this, we can keep talking about anything. But, <laughs> but don't do it. Yeah, I just... I, it's, it's, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. See, the reason I stopped was because I had seven shows on TV all at once. The only problem oh, is really? when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and mm. lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big. <laughs> And uh, can y'all hear uh, what he's saying, or do I need to kind of like tell y'all what he's saying because it's a little low? So say can say you can hear, or you can't really hear. And I can kind of like tell you exactly what he's saying. I want to make sure y'all can hear it. Shout out to Sacramento, uh, California. What's up, Terica? Uh, Los Angeles is in the. I right, turn it up. Okay, so I can't turn it up because you got to remember this is off somebody's phone. So I'm going to tell you what he's saying so I can help you out. So here we go. Lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big. Oh, he, said, he, said, he says, please give it up for Steve Harvey one time. So he said he don't want no parts of this in no way, form, or fashion. This is a Steve Harvey versus Cat Williams competition that was in, I think, 2009. And he literally burnt Steve Harvey so bad where Steve Harvey literally gave up stand-up comedy. Yeah. 
So he said, I don't know why he got all this money, but can't sell no tickets. And talked about a lady in the audience for 15, if for, for 15 damn minutes instead of talking about me because he's there to talk about Cat Williams, right? But instead of talking mess about Cat Williams in a competition, he'd rather talk about a woman in the uh, audience. That's what he said. So he just said, how you going to come to a championship bout and start talking about people in the audience? Talk about me, bitch ass nigga. That's what he said. You did. You did. He said you had to, you see that nigga had to take off that fake lace front high top wig and come out with a ball head. For those of you who don't know, the Steve Harvey hairline that was big in the like uh what 90s or whatever, Steve Harvey had the most perfect hairline ever. And they called it the Steve Harvey shape up or something, right? Come to find out, it was a lace front wig. So not only did Tyler Perry and all these other dudes <laughs> wear wigs and dresses, Steve Harvey also wore a wig. It was just a man wig. Everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. Hit them likes, y'all. Everybody hit the likes. Hit the likes. Hit the likes. Hit the likes. And share this video. Let everybody know we are live. Share this video. Hit this like. I mean, uh, these like buttons on YouTube and Facebook, that is. And share this video. Let everybody know we are live. We about to go crazy. And let's do this. And then we'll come right back to this. What's going on, Andre? Quick commercial break. How about we meet up at a coffee shop? and play this fun dating card game. We'll have fun and see if we're compatible all at the same time. Ooh, what's the name of the game? It's called Deeper Discussions. Mmm, I'm down. Okay, meet you at six. Fellas, buy this card game. Ladies, buy this card game. Buy about two or three free card games and give them out for Christmas. The main reason why people can't stay together isn't because they don't like each other no more. It's actually because their present family issues come up or their past family issues come up. But when you play deeper discussions, you'll be able to understand a person's family issues up front. This game can be played with either two people or an entire group. So have fun. Question number one, name a time when money was the main factor why a relationship went bad. Deeper discussions, dating edition. Again, these cards are good for vetting a potential boyfriend, Candidate. a potential girlfriend, a potential husband, a potential wife. The texture of these cards are so soft and silky, by the way. Like, like they ain't gonna like get really wore out. Durable. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to the mess. Let's get back to the mess. Everybody hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button. All right, so right now, Cat Williams is presently going crazy on Steve Harvey. He said he tried to he tried to copy off me uh walking out with that ugly ass town. With a black suit like he's going to a funeral. Yours, nigga, yours. Steve Harvey is showing up in a black suit attending his own funeral. Whatever, that's the fuck is. You don't want to 
Alright, so for those who didn't hear that part, Steve Harvey apparently came out there on some old school, uh, you know, old dude stuff, right? So he came out there trying to flirt with the chicks in the in a in a in a in a crowd instead of you know looking at this as a competition. So he came out there with an old black suit on with a shiny tie, trying to look like an old person, you know how Steve Harvey looking, right? And he turns around in his bit when steve harvey was up saying that if one of the chicks in the in the crowd was to lick one of his nipples he'll buy her a car and <laughs> cat williams just said i don't give a damn if and i don't want to say what he just said i don't give a damn what you do i'm not buying you no damn car what kind of old nigga shit is that so that's what he just said <laughs> All right, he said, this is a generation gap. Listen to what he said about the generation gap. Everybody coming in, everybody coming in, hit the like button. Everybody coming in, hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button. Everybody coming in, hit the like button and share this video out. Let everybody know we live. Share this video out. Let's go. <laughs> So if y'all didn't hear that part, he said, you think just because you was a shit in 1968, I'm the shit this evening, nigga. That's what he just said. He's going crazy. See, this right here is comedy right here. Where you at, Steve? See, it's one thing about saying or calling y'all y'all selves the kings of comedy, but then you turn around and add a key word, the original kings of comedy. It's okay, just like T.I. came out as the king of the South, right? But it's a difference if he was to come out and say he's the original king of the South. Because now it's a little bit different because there are different kings in different kingdoms, right? So different men can be different kings in different arenas, right? But when you say you are, you are the original kings of comedy, that means you were the original. But the originators were the Bill Cosby's and the, and the Eddie Murphy's. And, and so what are you talking about? So that's what he's saying. And I totally agree with him. Like, you got to understand, as men, we got to pay attention to our wording. We don't just jump out just saying random mess, unless you're Steve Harvey. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> exactly. Not the first one. Eddie Murphy. So if you didn't hear that part, he just said, I'm here to stomp on your hairpiece because he told him he had a wig on. So he said, I'm coming out here to stomp on your hairpiece and your career because you ain't no original king of nothing. Let me back that up. Just okay, that, that's, that, that's, the, that's the coolest part right there because he this is in 2009, if I'm not mistaken, he literally ends Steve Harvey's entire stand-up career. He literally ended stand-up after this because Steve Harvey actually thought he can sell out arenas, right? He could not sell out the arena. So instead of it just being a Steve Harvey show because he couldn't sell out, he literally hit up Cat Williams because at that time, I'm going to play out this video. I'm going to come back to that. Cat Williams literally was running around doing this to uh, people. For real, here it is, Kevin. I got a show at your hometown in Philly. I'm going to take my special there. On that stage, we can put whatever you want. A full court basketball court. A boxing ring. Two microphones for a rap cypher. Or you can get your ass dusted in comedy on that stage. So, Kevin, I mean, uh, uh, Cat Williams, he been had this energy for, for any comedian, right? So, what ended up happening was, I told you. So, what ended up happening was, since Steve Harvey could not sell out his show, he challenged Cat Williams to a competition in order to sell more tickets. So here come Cat Williams tearing, tearing Steve Harvey's ass up. So that's actually what uh, Cat Williams is staying on stage. <laughs> Now listen to what he says next. Right there. So real quick, who in the chat was aware that Steve Harvey's cool little hairstyle that he used to wear was all a wig? Who knew that? Comment in the chat, I knew, or comment in the chat, I didn't know. Who knew that Steve Harvey was wearing a wig all this time? It's just a man wig. Because... That's the thing that I did not know until this. I, I didn't know. 
Nope, not me. I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I literally didn't know. So I'm like, yo. And somebody said, who cares? Well, I think we all should care. Because this whole show today, everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button and everybody share this video. So I need you to hit the like button and I need you to share this video. And the link is in the chat for you to buy my Deeper Discussions car game. All right. Or you could buy my family empowerment t-shirts on that same link for the Deeper Discussions car game. So hit the link, hit the like button, and share this video, especially on Facebook. I need the the, the Facebook. The, the, the likes aren't going up. Facebook, the likes aren't going up. Hit the like button. So look, <clears throat> who knew that it was a hairpiece? I didn't know it was a hairpiece. And somebody said, who cares whether it was a hairpiece or not? Well, in my opinion, just as a man, I think it's important for um, men to not run around acting like women. See, women literally wear hair pieces or lace fronts. A man wearing a lace front and it's a high top fade, like that's not what men do, right? We don't wear makeup. We don't wear lace fronts. So the reason why I care so much is we spend a lot of energy just just being ourselves and it takes a lot for us to just show up as ourselves with no makeup and all this other stuff and then you got dudes out here wearing lace front wigs like women so this whole show is about exposing all these um punk dudes acting like women and and, and that's why I care we got to push all these weirdos out of the way and bring back the real shit. That's why. Grown ass man walking around with a lace front wig. That's disgusting. Oh, he's not finished, by the way. No, his mustache wasn't a lace front mustache. He had a lace front wig when he wore a high top fade. I'm going to show y'all the high top fade. Some of y'all probably don't even know Steve Harvey as he used to be on TV shows with a high top fade. So I'm gonna show y'all a picture of him with his high top fade in a second. So right now he's saying a bitch niggas that are in your life telling lies on you, whether it's the Steve Harvey's or like, and, and that's what we talking about right now. So Cat Williams been on this energy, all these fake dudes running around lying to you. So this whole show is going to expose all the black men that have been lying to us. Like we talk about the sexy reds and, and the, and the, and the Cardi B's and, and all these women that have been lying to us. Today, we're going to talk about all these dudes that have been lying to us because the sexy reds are ruining our community in their own way with the women, right? But guess who our sexy reds were? Steve Harvey's. Medea. Ricky Smiley. All these dudes running around wearing dresses. So you think um, Sexy Red is affecting the culture in a bad way? Yeah. But what about Tyler Perry affecting manhood in a toxic way? Nobody wants to talk about that. We just want to talk about the women doing stuff. 
Women, 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 women. What about these men? What about these punk ass men running around wearing dresses for the last 15 years like it's cute? It's not damn cute and it will stop now. Any man that wears a dress is a bitch, period. And I'll say it in any one of these niggas' faces. You know what? We're going to start over and I'm going to skip back to this because a lot of y'all didn't see the first part. This is how we started this shit off. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the damn like button, y'all. YouTube, the likes are down. I need at least 300 likes in the next 30 seconds, please, if you could. We we about to play it right now. We about to play it right now. Um uh uh here you go. Let's go. I haven't told you he won't go wear no dress until they offered him the dress and then he put it on. And what did he say after he Kevin's Kevin Hart bitch ass started this off? So y'all can talk about the sexy reds and how she's doing all this. Yes, she is. But look at this nigga. Nobody talks about the Kevin Hart's when y'all talk about the sexy reds. So when y'all bring up sexy red, y'all need to bring up Kevin Hart. So Kevin Hart, bitch ass. Tyler Perry's bitch ass. Okay. Martin Lawrence, bitch ass. How about that? That's what we need to talk about. These men that have literally, because in my opinion, all these bitch ass dudes has made it where it's okay for men to act like women for men to think like women and this is where this is where it started right here i haven't told you what hit the like button y'all hold on y'all it's messing up here we go i haven't told you he won't go wear no dress until they offered him the dress and then he put it on and what did he say after he wore it i made my own decision duh but you didn't make it I don't know if you've had this but i've had people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something i didn't want to do Watch and this. what just you've been off yeah oh they're in the room yeah i don't want to <laughs> yeah. that was my way of yes, cueing you like it's open time yeah you want me to keep talking about by, by all means let's, we can keep talking about anything but <laughs> but don't do it yeah I'm just, I'm so just, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. See, the reason I stopped was because I seven shows on TV all at once. The only problem is when he stopped stand-up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand-up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand-Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand-up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big. <laughs> Everybody hit the like button and happy Saturday. Everybody hit the like button. Happy Saturday. Yes. 
I'm the shit this evening. I'm the shit this evening. Okay, so y'all gotta y'all gotta hear that part. He said, "Do you think this nigga wanted to be here with me this evening?" No, he wanted Frank, frankly, Frankie, what is uh, uh, damn, Frankie ba Beverly and Mays, but he couldn't sell enough tickets. He wanted to do his own comedy show and have Frankie Beverly in the May in Mays, but he couldn't sell enough tickets, so he screwed up and thought he will challenge the great. The great Cat Williams. And this is the day, the last day that Steve Harvey ever did stand up comedy. Hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button. Can y'all please get these likes up? We need about 400 likes. There's a bunch of people in here. We got to get these likes up. Hit the like button and share this video out. Let's go. I got a lot of receipts. I'm just getting started. I got so many videos. I don't took every receipt that I've I've found in the last three, four days and put them all in this show. Let's go. We exposing all these niggas. Help on that shit. Yeah. Steve, we stopping on your hair piece and your career today. Cuz walk around here uh screwing up all these people with your damn fake hair piece. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her. All right, so Andre says uh, this was in 2009, 2009, New Year's Eve show. It was cold as hell that night, and the stage was set up like a boxing ring. Oh, so you was there? Oh, hell. Andre, if you was there, I need you to hit the link. I got to I gotta hear this. Were you there, Andre? I'm dropping the link now. If you, Andre, if you available and you was there, you got to you gotta pull up, bro. You got to pull up. And I may have my guy Ryan Davis uh, pulling up also. Uh, 
when whenever he has time i hit him up because i got a video of ryan davis back here also so uh he say he may pull up if he has time so yeah i was there andre pull up bro i gotta hear that story man that's crazy shout out to andre pull up bro do an interview nobody's ever talked to her and they, she's never been interviewed anywhere and now understand i'm not talking about one person and then he gets this high top fade making all That's black it. men think he got the best lineup so this is what cat williams was talking about when he's when he was on stage saying i'm gonna stomp on your your man wig and i'm gonna stomp on your career and he actually made steve harvey take that shit off so when steve harvey came out on stage instead of him him coming out with that high top fade that he was wearing in 2009 he came out with a bald head out of nowhere so he won't get clowned because cat williams literally said he was going to jump up grab it yank it off his head and stomp on it on stage if he came out with it and like I said, uh, Andre was at the actual show. All right, Andre said uh, he, he needs 20 minutes to come up. So we're going to come back to this high top fade Cat Williams versus Steve Harvey thing uh, uh, 20 minutes later because when, when Andre comes up, it's about to go crazy. So this is the high top fade that Cat Williams was talking about. He was going to jump up and pull it off his head and stomp on it. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't I, we need to change. It's what the fuck we do about it. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her. And they, she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now, understand, I'm not talking about one person. And then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over cable. And look. Yo, when he pulled out the Mr. Potato Head comparison, still have my ticket stubs. Oh, damn, you still got a ticket stub to that show. Yo. When they pulled out the Mr. Potato Head, y'all like, come on, man. Golly, man. Now, right now, put a one in the chat if Steve Harvey looks like Mr. Potato Head or is Cat Williams exaggerating. Put a one in the chat if Steve Harvey looks like Mr. Potato Head or is Cat Williams just exaggerating. This is nuts. This is literally the ultimate roast. Probably the net. This is the biggest roast of any comedian in the last 10 years. Look at this mess, man. This is nuts. Now, before we keep going, if y'all are enjoying the show, one, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Some of y'all are not subscribed to my channel. So we need to get these likes up. That's one. Subscribe to my channel and make sure to hit the notification bell because my YouTube channel has been shadow banned for the last year. So I need y'all's support to actually bring me out of the shadow ban that I've been for the last year and a half. So do that as a favor for me. So hit the like button, subscribe to my channel right now hit the notification bell and on top of that for those who don't know me i have a deeper discussions card game is 80 cards in this card game and it's meant to help men and women vet each other when you go out on dates you want to meet somebody on bumble meet somebody on tinder 
you ain't even got to spend a lot of money, fellas. All you got to do is be like, yo, how about we meet up at a coffee shop and play this uh, uh, dating card game that I just bought? No woman is going to say no. So a lot of these women talking about, I don't want to go here. I don't want to go there. Yeah. But if you bring something to do while you're at the coffee shop, now you got a different scenario. So I want y'all to take notes right now. If you are online dating right now, I need you to take notes. And what I need you to do is listen to what this man says and do this in your real life after you buy this car game. Listen to this. How about we meet up at a coffee shop and play this fun dating card game? We'll have fun and see if we're compatible all at the same time. Ooh, what's the name of the game? And let me tell y'all something. If a girl ever says, ew, she's into you. Ooh, what? If she, ever, if she makes that noise after you say that, you got her. Ooh, what's the name of the game? It's called Deeper Discussions. Mmm, I'm down. Okay, meet you at six. Fellas, buy this car game. Ladies, buy this car game. Buy about two or three car games and give them out for Christmas. The main reason why people can't stay together isn't because they don't like each other no more. It's actually because their present family issues come up or their past family issues come up. But when you play deeper discussions, you'll be able to understand a person's family issues up front. This game can be played with either two people or an entire group, so have fun. Question number one, name a time when money was the main factor why a relationship went bad. Deeper discussions dating edition. Again, these cards are good for vetting a potential boyfriend, Candidate. a potential girlfriend, a potential husband, a potential wife. The texture of these cards are so soft and silky, by the way. Like, like they ain't gonna like get really wore out. After durable. You. Look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. That, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. He was so egregious, I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did. It's in my contract. Can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he write do jokes. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I say that again for the audience? Can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he write do jokes. He did four comedy Wake up, Bernice. Good morning. My name is Bernice, and I love Jesus. So, for those who don't know, this is Ricky Smiley and, of course, Tyler Perry. So they actually acted together. So earlier I talked about how many times people want to talk about sexy red ruining black people and, you know, all these women twerking and and uh, the gorillas running around affecting black women. Right. But. We had to deal with bullshit like this for the last 20, probably I would say 10 years of these grown ass men presenting themselves as women in front of other men like it's cool to do and then later on in the show i'm going to show you how these bitch ass dudes literally are going to say they didn't even want to wear a dress but let's keep going but this is this is the mess that is going on with men. You want to know why so many men are soft? You want to know why so many men are gay? There's nothing wrong with being gay. But do you want to know why things are the way they are versus the way they used to be? Tell me about Pops yesterday. You know what? Um, I might pull that up. Uh, uh. I, I might pull that up, Tiny uh, 2.0, if I could find it. I might pull that up. I actually called my dad, and, and he, he dropped some game. I'm going to see if I could find that real quick. But these dudes are the reasons why so many men are so effeminate. So all these men are running around making millions and billions of dollars, ruining and effeminizing black men. And I'm sick of it. That's the wrong camera. <laughs> oh, I'm Bernice Jenkins. I'm from the old Lord. Again, for the audience. So hold on. I want to I want to I want to play a little part of this Bernice Jenkins. 
I want to show you how Tyler Perry, everybody, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but everybody in the industry has been punking out Ricky Smiley for years. Watch how Medea punks out Ricky Smiley right here as a woman. Oh, I'm what's up, Lynette Trace? Uh, what's up, Lynette? I need Jenkins. I'm from the old Lord. Hold my mute while I shout. Watch what happens. This man dressed like a woman is going to get punked out by another man dressed like a woman. This is nuts. Everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. We're exposing all these weirdos today. Missionary event. Bernice, I'm going to take this cigarette and offer you as a burnt offering to the Lord if you don't yeah. shut up. Now you see that, right? You see how he got punked out right there, right? The men all pause when I walk into the room. The men all pause and they all sung the same old tune. She you got grown men in dresses twerking. And y'all want to talk about sexy red. No, sexy red ain't a problem. Because guess who paying sexy red? Men are paying sexy red. The same men that are paying these dudes to do this mess. But there's one man that did not have to get paid to do none of this stuff. That is Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry started off doing plays dressed like Medea. See, he didn't start off like on some, um, hold on, let me show you. He didn't start off, we're going to come back to this. See, in the beginning, Kevin Hart said he's not going to wear no dress. And they made him wear a dress, right? But Tyler Perry said, I'm going to start off wearing a dress because I like wearing dresses. So didn't nobody even have to make him sell out to wear a dress. He started off wearing a dress. And guess who else started off wearing a damn dress too? Ricky Smiley. So some of these niggas did not have to get pushed into doing this gay shit. They were just doing it because they wanted it. They wanted to. Kevin told you he wasn't going to wear no dress until they offered him the dress and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it. I don't know if you've had this, but I've had people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something I didn't want to do. And what? Just you've been off. Yeah. Oh, they're in the room. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> Yeah, that was my way of chewing you. Like it's open dialogue. Yeah, you want me to keep talking about it? By, by all means, we can keep talking about anything. But, <laughs> but don't do it. Yeah, I just, I just, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has. All right, so let me let me fast forward back to where we was at. Yeah, we're gonna expose all these motherfuckers today. So this is the most. This is super hilarious right here. All right, let me pass this. I want y'all to see this. Get your popcorn ready because this is going to be hilarious. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like. Terrica, where are my likes at? Terrica, Terrica, Terrica. Where you at? Terrica, where are my likes at? Hold on, y'all. I need to make sure that my likes are up. Are y'all hitting the like button? Because what I'm about to show y'all next is like worthy. So I need y'all to hit the like button. Hold on. Where are my likes? We got, we got 1,400 people in here. Our likes are at... Terrica, where you at, Terrica? Where are my likes? Because what I'm about to play out now is like-worthy, so I want the likes. Where we at? 1,500 people, and the likes are at 400. Come on, man. We at 400 likes, and we got 1,500 people. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Take a second out of y'all busy day because what I'm about to play y'all next is very like worthy. So can y'all take a second and I need a thousand people to hit the like button all at one time right now. I need a thousand people to hit the like button. Let's go. All right. Because I'm about to play something that's going to have y'all dying laughing. I'm going to put this on the big screen. Hit the like button, y'all. This is hilarious right here. Get the likes up. Get the likes up. Get the likes up. Get the likes up. Here we go. 
and see a hole. No, 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 you, you, you see how you see how Ricky Smiley is still getting chumped out. Remember, he got chumped out by Medill, right? Look how Ricky Smiley gets chumped out in this video. No, 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 Oh, we got a problem here? Look at Shannon, Sean. Turn away, nigga. Hey, Kev, you, you didn't say nothing to Cat Williams when Yo, so is that like worthy, y'all? Can I get the likes up now? I will play it again if I get my thousand likes right now. If y'all want me to play that again, put a one in the chat. But I need a thousand likes if y'all want me to play that again. Let's go. Put a one in the chat if y'all want me to play that again, but I need a thousand likes first. Let's go. Get these likes up and I'll gladly play it again. Put a one in the chat if you want me to play it again, but I need a thousand likes. Let's go. I'm about to check the likes right now. I need a thousand likes if y'all want me to play that thing again. Hold on, I'm refreshing right now. Where we at? <clears throat> Uh-uh, man. Come on now. We just had 500. We need a thousand likes right now. Y'all want me to play it again? Y'all got to hit the like button. So the people who are actually hitting the ones, hopefully y'all are hitting the likes also because these likes ain't going up. Let's go, y'all. There, there we go. Come on. There we go. They going up now. There we go. Let's have a like party real quick. I don't want to play with y'all. I don't want to slow roast y'all. I'm ready to play the video, but I need y'all to do y'all part. Hit these likes button. I mean, hit these like buttons, y'all. Run them numbers up, y'all. Let's go. All right, so I'm, I'm about to play it again. And next, I'm about to play, where is it? Kevin Hart, if y'all see right here, Kevin Hart said something about Cat Williams. So we're going to talk about two. We're going to talk about that too. So I got all the receipts today, y'all. That's why I'm deserving all of these likes i deserve a thousand likes in 30 seconds y'all all right here we go now remember medea is punking out ricky smiley right here lord if you don't shut up the men all pause when i walk into the room the men all pause and they all sung the same old tune she oh 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 and she Hold on, Dave Chappelle wore nothing. Dave Chappelle did not wear no dress in 1993. Who's who's Dave? P Love, who you talking about? No, we're not going to um, disrespect Dave Chappelle like that. Dave Chappelle ain't wore no dress. Stop it. I don't know if you're talking about there's another Dave, but David, uh, uh, Dave Chappelle did not wear no dress. We're not, we not doing that. Shout out to Corey Holcomb. Sh shout out to Corey Holcomb. Shout out to Cat Williams. Like, we're we, we not going to just be running around saying everybody don't wear a dress. We're not doing that. Shout out to Ryan Davis, comedian Ryan Davis. He ain't wear no dress. Come on, man. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. All right, here we go. Yeah, he wore a KKK. That's not a dress. Oh. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. How did they make him have the little look at look at the slip the, the the sliveling look at the little uh the bottom lip? How did they make his bottom lip do that? Like this. No, 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 no. Right, watch Ricky Smiley's bottom lip. How the hell did they do that? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, we got a problem here? 
Look at Shannon, Sean. Hey, Kev, you you didn't say nothing to Cat Williams when he did a three-hour uh, interview talking slow yesterday. <laughs> you didn't put a shot clock on him. <laughs> Well, do, you, do you entertain the circus or do you watch it, Perk? Which one do you do? <laughs> Another fun fact about the... Um... Hold on. Uh, if you want to um, leave... If you want me to read your comment, I need y'all to put in a super chat. Y'all want me to read y'all comment, I need y'all to put in a super chat. But I will read this comment. But if y'all want me to read your comment, and I'll put in the super chat. And the biggest super chat, $50 or up, will be the actual sponsor for this live and i'll put your your channel in the in the chat for everybody to see all right so somebody on facebook says i'm actually confused because you talking about these men who's dressing like women is confusing to other males but yet you say is nothing wrong with being you know the g word so if there's nothing wrong with that what's the point of the conversation well that's an interesting point. When I say there's nothing wrong with somebody being gay, there's nothing wrong with it because people can make whatever choice that they want to do, okay, with their own bodies and their own lives. But the problem I have is when it becomes a trend to be gay. See, there's a lot of young men who can't get girls, right? And back in the day, when I was young, if you can't get girls, you just got to get your weight up. You got to learn how to play basketball. You got to try out for the football team. You got to get out in the streets. You can't be in the house. You got to uh, learn how to fight. You got to learn game. You got to listen to rap music. You got to do something. You, you, you got to find some type of way to compete to get girls. But what's going on now with these dress wearing dudes? They're circumventing manhood because part of manhood is not being able to get something or somebody and looking around like, I got to get my weight up. I got to go lift weights. I got to get my chest standing out. I got to get my pecs ready. You know, I got to do something. I got to go get some money. But what these weirdos have done They've allowed young men who can't get women to actually just go be with men instead of not being able to get women. And that right there is the problem. If somebody wants to be gay, I don't care. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But leave the rest of us alone because it's young, impressionable boys and young, impressionable girls. So I'm going to ask you a question, um, Christy. Who, who, who left this uh, comment. And like I said, if y'all want me to read your, actually com your actual comment, put in the Super Chat. This is the only comment I'm addressing because this right here just pissed me off. It's nothing wrong with being a hoe. I'll say it again. It's nothing wrong with being a hoe. Does that mean everybody's supposed to be a hoe? No. I don't have a problem with hoes as long as you, can you don't have children. See, for anybody that doesn't know me, I am not here for you. I'm not here to protect the women. I'm not here to protect the men. I'm here to protect these children. All right. Do you see what my damn shirt says? My shirt says family empowerment. OK, so if somebody wants to be gay and don't have children. They can go over there because they can't have children because they're gay. So the reason why is nothing wrong with being gay because you can't have children. But when you start adding children to the situation, that's when I start getting upset because all of us as black people are in some type of way, whether doing this way or doing something over here, are ruining these children. So if somebody wants to be gay and they don't have children, it don't affect me. I don't care. But when you start having children, because a lot of these young boys, they are bi and not just gay. You understand what I'm saying? So they mess with girls and mess with boys and get the girl pregnant and then still over here mess with boys. And then now he going to screw up his son because he don't screw himself up. So that's when I got a problem with it. So 
just a bare bones, um, just a thought process. No, I ain't got a problem with gay people. But at the same time, from a bare bone, bare bones thought process, I ain't got a problem with ho hoes either. But is being a hoe a negative thing? Yes. Just like being gay, regardless of what you want to think, is it, it has some type of negative connotation on it. Because why? Because it goes against family. Okay. And anything that goes against family, anything that goes against God, husband, wife, child, according to the Bible, is frowned upon. But you can do what you want to do. God gives us free will. And who am I to not give or, or, or offer free will to people? I'm not God. I got to just follow the rules. So you can do whatever you want to do. But the bottom line is we got to save our children from these bum ass adults running around dressing up like women and they ain't gay. Ricky Smiley got about four kids and three grandbabies running around dressing up like a damn woman. Don't you think him running around wearing the dress is affecting the psyche of his children? That's why I'm doing this. So can we keep going or do y'all need more explanation on why I said what I goddamn said? I want to hear this shit. Don't start with me today. Shout out to love. Uh, I love my ad block. <clears throat> Dave Chappelle wore a dress in Robin Hood men in tights. Come on, man. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. I don't agree with you. Well, I don't know because I ain't seen it. But um, come on. Let's, let's keep going. Keep going. Like I said, any other comment you want me to read, put it in the super chat. Let's keep going. Got me all off my circle. Just got me all pissed off. New York Knicks. I don't know if you guys know this, but Cat Williams bought the Knicks. He definitely bought it. He bought the Knicks, yeah. and uh, it's rumored that he took the Knicks back, returned them with a receipt. That's yeah, you could do that. You so I want y'all to think about this. This is a this is a comedian, right? Because the thing about it is, these comedians. They trying to clap back at at um Cat Williams, right? This has to be the trashiest comeback I've ever heard in my life. So I'm gonna show you another comedian that had a more trash comeback. Cause is this a trash comeback or not? Like, is you gonna say something funny as a comedian? All right, Terrica said we had 640 likes. I asked for a thousand likes. It's 1,600 people in here, right? I asked for 1,000 likes. That's all I asked for. I can't get 1,000. I can't get 400 more likes, y'all. I can't get that. I can't get 400 more likes. That's all I'm asking for. I'm just asking for 400 people. If you have not liked the video, if you have not shared the video, can you please take a second to hit the like button and share this video? Hit the like button and hit the share button. Please. All right, so let's go. So I want to show y'all another trashy comeback. This is disgusting. Address lunacy and hypocrisy. And downright ignorance. But it's so funny how many people think this dumb, stupid mother is spitting truth but that's the internet i guess you guys want to believe in something so bad i guess you left god and now you believe in bro what are you talking about sir what are you talking about like you're a comedian say something funny like what is with these clapbacks like all these comedians have been extremely dry like, what in the hell is going on? Y'all are comedians or no? Chimps like this. Who's an actual chimp, and you're not listening to what he's saying. He's actually calling for help. Um, he's calling for help. None of this says 
lines. Let me ask y'all a question. Um, put a one in the chat if you actually seen uh the club Shay Shay interview. Because every uh show I'm doing having to do with Cat Williams, I'm gonna make sure to say that he was on Club Shay Shay. All right, because I want to shout out not only Cat Williams, but my guy Shannon Sharp. Because Shannon Sharp is out here doing it big. And if anybody is doing uh, videos about Cat Williams and not mentioning Club Shay Shay and Shannon Sharp, you need to get in their comments and say, hey, you need to shut you need to shout out a big homie, Shannon Sharp. Don't let none of these people on any of these uh, uh, lives be sitting here talking about Cat Williams taking Club Shay Shay material without shouting out Club Shay Shay and Shannon Sharp. So right now, real quick, I need everybody in the chat to say shout out to Shannon Sharp. S-H-A-N-N-O-N-S-H-R-P-E. And don't forget the E. Shout out to Shannon Sharp with an E. You got to put the E in there. Shannon Sharp. Shout out to Shannon Sharp for Club Shay Shay. Comment in the chat. Come on, y'all. We got to get, we got to bring the algorithm to Club Shay Shay because all of us are getting this content from Club Shay Shay and Shannon Sharp. We got to get that man his props. Shout out to uh, Shannon Sharp. All right, we have 700 likes. We need 300 more. Keep hitting the like button. I appreciate y'all. All right, y'all. Let's keep going. Because you never know. Shannon Sharp might be watching. We got to shout out to Shannon Sharp, man. We got to shout out to the big homie. Everybody talking about Cat Williams. For what? Because of Shannon Sharp. Shout out to Shannon Sharp. Yeah. You know you can do the that. The first person ever did. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. they gave him a 30-day policy. He, had a, well, he bought it for 15 days. And returned it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so another done. fun fact about the yep. New York Knicks. He made the team. He, made, he played. You see these dry-ass jokes, y'all? Cat Williams just literally ruined everybody's life. And they ain't even got no comeback. I thought y'all were comedians. Like, what's up with the comedians, bro? Up with nothing. Faison said that getting a Netflix special is easy. I have 12 specials. Guess how many Faison got? Zero. This is a white guy has been doing stand-up for 20 Kat made a comment. <coughs> Why you think Gary Owen, who's a white guy, has been doing stand-up for 25 years, hasn't crossed over? And when he said it, I was like, wait a minute, was that a good thing or a bad thing? And I literally had to go to Twitter and start asking people, was I catching strays or what was that? And they're like, no, they were saying you haven't sold your soul. That's why you have. All right, shout out to K Bragg. You're asking too much of Kevin. Expecting an unfunny person to say something funny is unjust. Wow. I think Kevin Hart is funny, man. I think uh, Kevin Hart, like Kevin Hart is one of, um my favorite i would say new comedians <clears throat> not old school old, old school comedians but i like kevin hart because kevin hart is animated right you know when like uh do y'all as an example because i, I want to give kevin hart uh uh his props i have a problem with kevin hart wearing a dress so i don't have a certain amount of respect for him but all of these comedians i have the comedian respect for them for what they add to our lives as far as comedy. Do y'all remember? Because I want to play it, but I don't want to get, you know, uh, demonetized or whatever. Um, do you remember when Kevin Hart told that story about when the child came home and the teacher said something to the child and the mama was like, you tell her what I said. And the little boy was like, so do I say it like that or do I say it like that? Look, you be quiet. You tell her I said you da 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 right? And then Kevin Hart told the story when he came back out to the to the uh to the school and then he walks in, Mrs. Nelson, uh he's like, Kevin, Mrs. Nelson. And then she had um 
a piece of paper taped on his chest, I think, right? And then he tells his friends, he's like, it's about to go down. And he literally walks up to Mrs. Whatever Nelson and says, uh, what 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 did she say? What did he say? You long titty. It was hilarious. I, w- I wish I could play it. I don't want I don't want no problem. Kevin Hart, man, he's animated, y'all. That was hilarious. Hold on, man. Y'all, 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 y'all disrespecting Kevin Hart. Hold on. Kevin Hart, where he talked about going off on his teacher. We're not gonna do him like that. Where is it at? Is it this? Tell you. My mom told me to tell you to mind your damn mother I'm sorry, that was funny. That was funny. I don't know what y'all talk about. That was funny as hell. So Kevin Hart, to me, is the best animated comedian. Him sitting down, talking, he's not funny at all. But when he started making the noises and stuff, the animation, he 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 he's a man. He's a man. So shout out Kevin Hart. I'm not going to... Uh, shit on Kevin Hart. Y'all ain't finna do it either. Uh, with all due respect, shout out to K Bragg. With all due respect, he had one funny special. No other special has been funny, and every role he plays uh, gives uh, Mistral show to me. I, I can I can understand that. I can understand that. But you can kind of say the same thing about Cat Williams. We can say the same thing about Cat Williams, though. Since the um when when he had a green jacket on, um uh what what was that what was that 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 comedy show when he had a green jacket on? Um, he ain't been funnier than that. So I'm just saying, y'all, like a lot of these comedians have been missing the mark. Um, um, not Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock. Chris Rock just came out with a special. Uh, a few days ago it wasn't good i tried to laugh but i was just like eh whatever so i would say chris rock's last three specials have been trash so we're not just gonna go off on one comedian a lot of these comedians be missing yeah pimp chronicles name a special that cat williams did that was better than pimp chronicles you can't you can't come on now so no, if you put out a classic, you are a great comedian. So it is what it is. Look, man, I'm just trying to be objective. Y'all want to start talking mess about Kevin Kevin Hart. I like Kevin Hart. I just don't like these dress wearing niggas. Let's keep going. Oh, he, he played. played. He played with the niggas. He, he played with them. We That's know he's fast. They say he's fast. Yeah, he run he's a one of the fastest. A three point nine. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> what you say? And hit the like button, y'all. Hit the like button. 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 Three nine. He figured out how to play basketball from reading all them books. Three thousand of them. Three thousand a year. A year. That's two a day. At six years old. That's two a day. Who knew he was so voracious? At the age seven, he got accepted to the. I think it was Delaware University. Yeah. Never made public news. No. Ever. For 48 years, yeah. they kept it a secret. It just dropped on us. Right. Well, speaking well of he which, was hitchhiking on side of the street yeah. at 13. Yeah. So <laughs> they couldn't find it. Speaking of which, Kev, you've, you've had a busy week. Yeah, yeah. But- this is what I'm saying, man. This is this is all you got. <clears throat> what about Steve Harvey? Oh, we just killed. We we just told Steve Harvey a new ass. You, you missed it, uh, Precious Heart. I, I, I'll show it to you, though. Actually, you know what? We had 10, 18, we're going to start over and we're going to skip right back. Kevin told you he wasn't going to wear no dress until they offered him the dress and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it. I don't know if you've had this, but I've had people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something I didn't want to do. And what? Just, you've been offered, yeah. Oh, they're in the room. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. 
that was my way of yes, cueing you. Like, it's open time. Yeah, you want me to keep talking about it? By, by all means, let's, we can talk about anything. But, <laughs> but don't do it. Yeah, I just... Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. See, the reason I stopped was because I had seven shows on TV all at once. The only problem... Yeah, Jamie Foxx was uh, wearing a damn dress uh, looking like a weirdo also. But, you know, Jamie Foxx is... You know, I, I think some of these dudes enjoy wearing dresses. Is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost. All right, shout out to Andre. I'm glad we coming back right now because Andre said he was at this show that I'm about to talk about right here. I'm dropping a link right now, Andre, and shout out to Andre for the $10, $10 super chat. Thank you so much for that. All right, the link is dropped. So this show I'm about to play y'all, my guy Andre was in the audience. Because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig and I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big. Hold on, let me introduce the, 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 my, my guy real quick. Oh, What's yeah. going on, bro? What's up, brother? Man, I've been watching it uh, the whole time, man, uh, that you've been doing the broadcast. Man, you're taking me back down memory lane with, with all of these, because I've seen all of these performers live before they blew up. I saw okay. uh, uh, Kevin Hart before he blew up when he was in Fort Wayne, Indiana, came and did a mm -hmm. show at a small theater. Uh, I saw... Um, Tyler Perry, when they were just doing, some guys are, are not, not old enough for this, but others are. Tyler Perry blew up off a of bootleg uh, DVDs because people would go to his original shows and record. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew who this dude was. So he was, like you said, he was wearing dresses long before he needed to wear they dresses. Want. And so yeah. you'll be at the barbershop and say, hey, man, I got to, you know, at that time period, it was, it's called the chit Chitlin Circuit of Black Chitlin Plays. Circuit. So you know, black mm -hmm. plays will come to different towns, and we go support. But nobody knew, you know, nobody heard of this one dude. It, but it was bootleg CDs that were going yeah. around throughout the country, and everybody at the barbershops and the beauty salons were just buying and collecting these CDs. And then when he finally started getting notoriety, and Tyler Perry started traveling, that's when uh, that's when people start really going to his shows. And and I remember one one show. He at the end of the show, he said. Could y'all do me a favor now? Now that you all know me, could you stop buying my CDs bootleg? And could you just come out to the shows and support? Because that's what blew him up was yeah. people selling his bootleg out of the truck trunk. Yeah. Same thing with the uh not the same thing, but uh at that show that you're about to show, uh Detroit, because I'm originally from from the 313. Shout out to Detroiters. Shout out to I was living in Fort Wayne, Indiana at that time period. And I was married at that time period in Fort Wayne, right? Mm -hmm. And so every year, my wife and I, we have been, we, I, I've been to over 250 concerts and plays. So I've mm. seen everybody. I saw Drake on his first tour with Waka Flocka Flame. I saw the Cash Money Millionaires reunions. I've seen uh, Frankie Beverly and Mays, Earth, Wind and Fire. I've been from the Essence Festival all the way to the Miami Jazz Festival, all the way to the Cincinnati Jazz Festival in Dayton and in Cincinnati, Ohio, year after year. So I've seen mm. everybody. And so every year we would go to different events for New Year's. So we went yeah. to, to Texas to see Gary Owens one year. We uh, went to Miami and saw uh, it was Jay-Z and Mary J. Blige in concert in Miami on New Year's. And Kanye okay. popped up as a surprise guest. And the, the, mm. um, the roof just took off because no, he came from behind a, a drum. Nobody knew who he was. Uh, yeah. As far as being at the concert, somebody said, well, somebody, uh, Jay-Z was doing Diamonds Are Forever. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, some guy jumps from behind the, the drums and with the microphone. We're like, okay. For it, didn't, it took a minute, a second to catch. Whoa, it's Kanye, yeah. and the crowd went crazy. And this was in Miami, yeah. right? 
Yeah, so yeah. Uh, go back to 2009. It was a cold, man. I remember that night. It was freezing in Detroit, right? And uh-huh. so we're walking to the Joe Louis Arena. That's where it was at, uh, downtown Detroit. And we get there. And you're right. Uh, uh, Steve Harvey catered most of his show towards the audience. It was more like a he was he was he was trying to do like a DL Hughley. Remember DL Hughley was DL Hughley was, used to talk 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 to the people in the chat. But that's what he this, was trying to do. But wasn't this a competition? Can you explain what like what they were actually doing? So I'm gonna play a little bit of it and then I'm gonna come back to you so you can okay. explain what they talking about. All right, so here we go. So was this a championship bout or was it was it presented like that? It was presented to us, the the, the ticket holders and the ticket purchasers that was going to be Cat Williams versus Steve Harvey. So when you came in, you were expecting that they were going to bring some of their best jokes and then they were going to joke about each other. Or Mm. we were expecting that there was going to be a segment where Steve and Cat kind of like were on the same, because they, they had to set yeah. up like a boxing ring, like a giant boxing ring. Yeah. And so you were thinking that that at one point in time, they were just going to go uh, like old school kids just capping on each other, right? But yeah. it didn't happen like that. So Steve came out and just was kind of like cracking jokes on the audience. And he was talking about how, basically he was talking about, you know, I'm married and he was talking, he had just started at that time period talking about his wife, Marjorie. And mm-hmm. that's when he was talking about the, you know, my my left nipple. She suckled a net left nipple. I give her I this, that, that, and this. Uh, yeah. You know, in other words, a woman knows exactly where to touch a man. My spot is well. This is yeah. my spot. That's what we saying. This is my spot where my wife touched me here. Blah 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 blah. So here's my question: Did he come out with his man wig, or did he come out bald headed? If I'm not mistaken, then, he was wearing his high top uh, right. lace front wig. And yep. uh, Cat Williams ended his 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 live career, his stand up career in this particular um, uh, Detroit situation on New Year's. Did he come out with the wig on, or did he come out bald headed? You know what? I don't think that he had the wig on that particular day because the rumor yeah. about the wig had had already started to surface like a year or two prior to that. Like yeah. when he was doing that, like when he was in full scheme, I mean, full mode on the uh, Steve Harvey show as a, as a school teacher, it, mm-hmm. it you you kind of thought it, but you let it go. You gave him, you know, maybe he got a, a good liner or maybe, who's his barber type of thing, yeah. right? But then yeah. as time progressed and as the show started to wind down, the rumors already had started to come out about okay. the, the, the wig, the hairpiece. So by okay. the time he got to the show, he just was like, you and I, he just wore his murder one. He shaved the ball. Right, uh-huh. like uh, like uh, in Detroit, we call a ball head is first degree, because okay, okay. when they when they uh when they uh, uh you know execution when you get ready to get electrocuted they, they shave your hair bald. right yeah. so in Detroit we say you get a murder one the first degree yeah and so that's yeah. what the ball head is right and so he came out with a murder one and uh uh so it was like okay cool and you're expecting Steve to kind of like just like a boxer to coming at each other. And so you think yeah. Steve's about to come out and just roast Cat, talk about some of Cat jokes, or talk about Cat's height, or talk about Did that he he's- Did he say anything about time. Cat? Nothing, nothing. He said nothing, nothing about Cat Williams. No, and that's the part that blew everybody away. That's what, what made Cat set so good. Yeah. Because Cat came out just swinging. Didn't, yeah. He didn't pause. It wasn't like, it. what you're seeing right now was not a buildup. That mm-hmm. was literally as soon as he walked in the ring, and <clears throat> that was Cat William non stop blow after blow after blow after blow. He did not stop, and that's what made the audience. It was almost like it was kind of funny, it kind of took you back. Like Steve was so, so you know, funny and kind of like docile in regards yeah. to it being a championship about to where you didn't really trip on. Because Steve was just being Steve, you know, yeah, his his style, you know, how Steve could be in the church and tell jokes, or he could be on the stage and tell jokes. Uh-huh. And then he did do a little bit of heckling towards the audience. Okay, cool, it's funny, and some women in there in the audience in the front area had weaves and dudes dressed like this or just like so. He kind of like, but he got heckling. a wig. 
How right. you gonna talk about somebody wig and he got he wearing a damn wig? So let me play a little bit of it right here. Go ahead. Hold on. Let me, let me read the super chat real quick. Shout out to K Bragg. Shout out to you, K Bragg, for the super chats. What's wild about the Kevin clip is everyone is calling Cat a hater, but they gossiping like some chatty patty hating ass bitches. Hold on. Who are gossiping about the who's 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 who are the chatty patties? You saying me? You saying cat or you saying oh no 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 I, I know what you're talking about they gossip when they was in that room. I, I know okay, I get what you're saying, uh K Bragg. You talk about um when they was in, in the room with the basketball players. So I, I get what you're saying. We'll go to that in a second. <laughs> Pause it for a second. One of the reasons why Steve came out with his hair ball is because he didn't want to get, even though he ended up doing it, he didn't want to give Cat Williams ammunition. Remember, this is a boxing. This, oh, yeah. I mean, this is a comedy championship. So yeah, he's thinking that if I if I come out and I showcase for the first time on New Year's Eve, mm. my my hair, you know, my this being bald. Mm. It, it takes away the ammunition that Cat Williams will have, but he didn't realize that didn't do anything but fuel the fire. And like I mentioned just a minute ago, this what you guys are watching right now is literally Cat Williams didn't come out and and he just he said thank you to Steve Harvey, you know, shout out to Steve. And that, from that moment, it was blow after blow after blow, and it was nonstop. It wasn't like he slowed down on Steve. He yeah. literally came out to fight, and the audience was kind of like I said, we were kind of took back at the fact that Steve didn't come out like that, but Cat came out as if it was a championship. He, he gave yeah. you what you came there for. He gave you, you walked through that Detroit code and you came mm -hmm. from different cities. So people were coming from everywhere because once they found out that it was supposed to be Cat Williams versus Steve Harvey, because that's how it was sold to us, you're like, oh man, it's going to be the one. And yeah. it never, it, it didn't turn out like that. But Cat Williams, uh, 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 was the one. And you know what? The other thing that you don't see on this, mm -hmm. Cat Williams, what 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 pissed Cat Williams off is Steve Harvey did an hour and like forty minute. No, I'm sorry, but an hour and fifteen minute show. That Cat Williams you see, Cat Williams was only allowed to do thirty minutes. That's no. Yeah, Cat Williams only allowed 30 minutes, dude. I remember oh, all that now. It's all, it's all coming back now. Because that's what pissed him off. He was only mm -hmm. allowed to do 30 minutes. He was like, he said, now, he said, now y'all see, see how your boy did me. Uh, brought me out here. And it's all, because you know it's countdown to New Year's. It's 30 yeah. minutes before New Year's. Steve was supposed to come up on stage and do the, you know, the five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. So, so now we're looking at our watches like, oh, man, this dude, he right. He only got like. 25 30 minutes to do his show with Steve was on the stage like forever. Wow. And so that's, that's another thing. <clears throat> now I remember why Cat was so pissed at Man. that and he just hit Steve like that because he said, Y'all see how he did me. I only got like 20 to 30 minutes to even do my set. I remember that. Yep. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's crazy. Let's keep going. That's that's disrespectful. Actually, um, uh, he did that to Bernie Mac when they was on Kings of Comedy. Also, that's why they used to get into it. So yeah. That crowd went. Now, now pause it for a second. You got to uh, realize the, the the severity of that joke. Uh, We're talking about the gossip at that time period. You had the the top got Fred Hammond coming out of Detroit. You mm. got a uh, uh, Dorothy Norwood coming out of Detroit. You got the Clark sisters coming. We're talking about the gospel music capital, other than Nashville, Detroit, mm. Michigan.
We got mm-hmm. commission coming out of Detroit. So to make a Holy Spirit joke and it works in one of the church capitals, that that joke was so timed for the right city to bring About that joke. Ed, Bruh, uh, also, that joke was a. If, if I never remember any joke that night, was yeah. that particular joke when he said, "I don't care if the woman had the Holy Spirit in her mouth. I am not giving. I'm not man." That Detroit that crowd, crowd, that church, a uh, 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 capital crowd, went crazy. After yeah. that, it was just everything. It was, it was after that. Any joke after that was like was like Cat Williams was just stomping on the on the side of the neck of Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey's all on the ground, and it's like his neck is being just stomped on now. He, <laughs> he's knocked out. He was knocked out. The fight was over. Cat Williams could have stopped at that moment. And, but the rest of the jokes were just him stomping on, on Steve Harvey. One of the reasons was, going back to as I was saying, because he he took an hour and 15 minutes to do his set. And then New Year's Eve is coming. We know Steve is about to come back on stage for the countdown. And it was only like 20, 25 minutes when, when Cat got on stage. He said, y'all see how your boy did me. That's the first thing that he mentioned to us. See, y'all don't see that in that clip. But the first thing that he mentioned to us was, y'all see how he did me and only gave me 15, 20 minutes. I mean, gave me a 20, 30 minutes. All right, let's keep going. And and hold on. Before we keep going, y'all keep getting these likes up. So if you have not hit the like button, if you have not subscribed to my channel, or if you did subscribe to my channel, but you forgot to hit the notification bell, Subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, share this video, and make sure to hit the notification bell when you subscribe to the channel. All right, let's go. You see how the crowd still laughing? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just, that was so because he had to he set that joke up of of of. That was like I said, that was the first time he really kind of start talking about Marjorie. Start talking about mm-hmm. I think I don't th- think he was in with Marjorie at that. T- I'm not sure if it's with Marjorie he's with or with his his second wife. But he was talking mm-hmm. about how if my wife does this, blah, 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 I will buy her a, this. She, like I said, he was setting up the joke like every man has a spot that if you if you touch that spot or kiss that spot, that mm-hmm. you know, that'll drive him crazy. He was like, my left nipple, if my wife does this and that. Then I would buy it, make me want to buy her a car. And Cat Williams came and, and literally, it was like this dude was backstage just watching the show and taking notes to write taking material notes. down. Yeah. Because every yeah. joke that Steve came with, like a boxer, just like in a championship fight, mm-hmm. he ducked and came up with a swing. Duck came up with a swing. And so to sit back th- and see the genius of Cat Williams that night. Don't let this this video just kind of roll by you guys. And that's why I'm saying that particular joke in Detroit to be able to pull that joke off in, in a church mecca and, and have the crowd going crazy. That was amazing to sit back and not not use material that you wrote, but, but right. sit back and just watch your competition. That and night and say, OK, I got a joke for that one. OK, I got another yeah. one for that one. The whole night he took Steve Harvey's jokes apart. That's exactly what the whole night was. It was okay. He swung, he swung, but he didn't swing on me. He swung on the audience. Okay, I'm gonna swing back for the audience. And I'm trying to remember the other jokes. Oh, what? I, don't, I don't know if you got that on here, but the other joke was Steve was talking about, well, you know, Detroit is dangerous, and I don't go to the hoods, and da 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 da. And Cat uh-huh. Williams is in a boxing ring, right? Cat yeah. Williams say. All these people here are my people. He said, if I turn my back to this side of the audience, them my people and that side start cheering. If I turn my back to that side of the audience, these my people back here too. And the people behind him start cheering. If I yeah. turn, he turned he turned around to all four sides of the other corner. And mm-hmm. every time he turned his back, he said, and the people back here got my back too. And the, the each for all four corners were cheering. Each time yeah. he turned his back on that side of the mm. audience, I never get that joke. I mean, every he said, like, he said, like, I ain't scared to go in no neighborhood. This is Detroit, Michigan. This is my city. I'm from the it's Midwest, like the rest of y'all. And so he started every time Steve said, Well, I don't do this, and I don't I don't go in the hoods and I don't go into dangerous areas. And and Cat Williams said, I don't care what you're talking about. 
and he used all four corners of the ring against Steve Harvey. That was probably one of the greatest Cat Williams jokes that I have ever seen as far as audience participation. I wish it they would have amazing to see that. Like a, yeah, a I, not, I don't see that you have that in that clip, but that's one of the jokes that took place that night. Okay. <laughs> Do realize uh, also who Steve was at that time period to okay. Detroit church people. Remember, he was the top church comedian in the world at that time period. Uh, to where you can, what you knew that at that time period, Steve was gonna come it, because Ricky Smiley was was kind of like, and I've seen Ricky in concert too uh, at the Improv in Tampa, Tampa, Florida, in yeah. in in, in, uh, uh, in Ebor City. And so right in, right in Tampa. And so mm -hmm. at that time period, Steve had done several comp uh, stand-ups and he had did a woman thou art loose for uh, uh, opening for Bishop Jakes. So at that time period, Steve had already built a following in Detroit and in, in, in Nashville. And, and he had just, I don't even know if he was on the radio yet. I don't remember that, but he had already built a following. Um, in other words, this was Steve is Steve's audience. Yeah, his type of audience. You're in a church city, in a church audience. You've been here several times, and no, no, my bad. Was, was it at the? Yo, yeah, was at the Joe Louis Arena? I was thinking about the Fox for a second, uh, uh, but that's where I saw Kanye and Fantasia for the first time. And so, uh, Kanye first concert, Fantasia's uh, concert, and then I, then a few months, a, a couple years later, the uh, the ladies' first tour in yeah, Chicago. Let's, let's, stay, on, let's stay on this though. Let's, let's stay on this. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so so so. So you, you have to realize who Steve Harvey was to church folks as a comedian at that time period. He was at the top of his game as far as being at church events or the Detroit I actually crowd. Think, In other words, that city was his crowd. So to, I to think he was more of a host. Crowd, I ahead. think he was more of a host and not a comedian, though, because Cat Williams is a comedian and Steve Harvey is a host. Right. Y'all let me know in the chat. Am I wrong? Is Steve Harvey more of a host instead of a comedian? Because if anybody isn't funny, Steve is not funny at all. No. He ain't funny at all. But he's very, very good at hosting, at moderating a show. You know, standing up and being like, yeah, so this is what we about to do. He's a great host. I would say Steve Harvey is the best host that ever lived. Host. He's excellent. Not yeah. talk show, not, not comedian, but just host of any event. Not talk show host, not comedian, host of an event. If you, if you have Steve Harvey host any award show, any event, present people to come out, I think he's the best, and I think he's the best at it. But yeah. he's not a comedian. He's a host, just in my yeah. opinion. Steve should have been... Though, Steve shouldn't have, been a, shouldn't have been on that stage with Cat Williams. It was, it was... Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. So let's keep going. All right, so I wanna uh I wanna uh get get back to the uh rest of the show. You can hang out with me if you want to though. I'll hang out for a minute. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so hold on. Where is because I because people are like uh we've seen this part already. 
So one, I want to go to Gary on go go to Gary Owen real quick. I want y'all to see what he said. He Man, had, why you think <laughs> Gary Owen, who's a white guy, has been doing stand up for twenty five years? Stand up for twenty five years hasn't crossed. Cat made a comment. Why you think Gary Owen? Who's a white guy has been doing stand up for 25 years, hasn't crossed over. And when he said it, I was like, wait a minute, was that a good thing or bad thing? And I literally had to go to Twitter and start asking people, was I catching strays or what was that? And they're like, no, they were saying you haven't sold your soul. That's why you haven't crossed over. You've been consistently you. And that's why you haven't quote unquote crossed over. So I was like, oh, I, I was in an awkward situation one time where I can't say for 100% this person was trying to make me do something, casting couch type deal but it felt like it and i was like is this is this is this that point where i've always heard would you suck a dick for a million dollars and i was thinking to myself and i was in this office going in this room going well this is the i'm i'm about to answer this question and the answer was no i wouldn't so <laughs> now I, I i listen i can't say for 100 percent that's where the, it was going but it felt like it it felt like it. You got to be in the room to feel it. And I was like, oh, this dude is really coming on to me. I think he was feeling me out. Like, is this this dude? And this was years ago. I was young in the game. But I, I was just like, wait a minute. Is this happening right now? I made it very clear. I like women. I'm not going that route. So I think Kat was saying I haven't sold my soul. The event. Bernice, I'm going to take this cigarette and offer you as a burnt offering to the Lord if you don't shut up. <laughs> The men all pause when I walk into the room. These men sold they damn soul. The men all pause and they all sung the same old tune. She oh, oh, oh. And you wonder why so many men are effeminate? It's because of these corn balls right here. Oh, and she oh, oh. No, 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 no. This part right, right here had me dying laughing. Everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. No, 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 no. He, he, he pushed to me. Look at what he's smiling. I'm still trying to find out, nigga. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, we got a problem here? Look at Shadow Shaw. Look at Shadow Shaw. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kev, you you didn't say nothing to Cat Williams when he did a three hour. Uh, this is when uh uh the last super chat was talking about how men was sitting around being catty. <laughs> interview talking slow yesterday. <laughs> you didn't put a shot clock on him. <laughs> well, do, you, do you entertain the circus or do you watch it, Kurt? Which one? <laughs> Choke. And uh, I just want to fast forward. Nine is two and six in one. one. You're on Earth. <laughs> This the someone played this too. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't find it. Speaking of which, Kev, you've you've had a busy week. Yeah, yeah, but a tough one. Yeah, real real busy week. Seventeen year old boy <laughs> that put him in the in a headlock, rear right? naked choke in a in a headlock, right? But it's a known fact that Cat Williams do not breathe <laughs> oxygen, yeah. so it didn't bother. Him. Yeah, oh, copy that. You can't choke him out. Yeah, That's you a can't. Known fact. Everybody knows that. That's He's nineties two and six in <laughs> one on one. <laughs> Pickup game. I told my mother this the the other day, and she thought it was hilarious. I said, when when I was 15 years old, my first girlfriend cheated on me. Oh. And I remember making a decision that nobody would ever cheat on me again. And the way I was going to do that is by being the biggest actor on earth. And what happened? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so right here is when I have a problem with Ricky Smiley, right? Um, one thing I'll talk about with, with women, single mothers or whatever, right? Single mothers would um, try to justify single motherhood, right? And the justifying of the bad behavior is the biggest problem of the behavior, right? So right here, what I'm about to play right now, hit the like button, y'all, is when Ricky Smiley justifies wearing a dress like a bitch, right? Just say, yo, I was at a low point in my life. I was broke, you know, because comedians love to say, I used to sleep in my car, I was broke. Just say, I had to sell my ass any way I could 
in order to get a job because I was broke living in my car or whatever the hell you want to say. You know, every comedian is always talking about they living in their car, right? Just say that. Don't justify walking around in a goddamn dress looking like a freaking woman, you know? Just say I was broke and I sold my ass. You know, that's my whole thing. So let's go to this video. This is the problem I have with Ricky Smiley, old punk ass. You got to be a man in whatever you, you do or say. You just got to stand up and say, yeah, I did it. Now what? Stop justifying things like a woman. <clears throat> to do that is by being the biggest actor on earth. <laughs> Even though he lied on that right there, you want to pause it for a split second. What's that? Um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh. Oh, man, I'm having a, a Will Smith. He lied. Mm -hmm. Remember, Will what? Smith has already told the story several times where he, he said, I met Quincy Jones at a party. And Quincy mm -hmm. Jones came to me with a, a small script and said, listen, this is your opportunity. He said, I went to the back. Now, remember, he's older. He's like 19, mm -hmm. 20 years old. And he's already uh -huh. done the Fresh Prince albums. Mm -hmm. And so he meets Quincy at 19, 20 years old at this party. Quincy gives yeah. him a script and said, this is your chance. Will says, I go into a, a, a back room. I kind of practice a few lines. I come out in the middle of the party and then I get the part. He's told this story several times. So to sit back and say, well, at 15 years old, I said, I'm going to be the best actor. When at that time period, you were in the middle of your rap career. So which one is it? Are you in the middle of your rap? Because remember, I'm around for all those albums. I'm old yeah. enough to be to get that first Prince album, that first Fresh Prince album, that Nightmare yeah. on, on My Street album. That, yeah. that, that So the whole thing. And so to sit back and say, well, I was 15, I was thinking about acting when in the in the story you told us that you was 18, 19, 20, when Quincy Being came a to you, you were afraid and Quincy had to literally convince you, hey, kid, you really got something. You can't act. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so which one is it? Were you 15 years old and you, you already knew you were going to be an actor? Or was it that you were uncomfortable when Quincy Jones threw that script in your face when you, when you were 19? Which one yeah. is it? Yeah. Yeah, man. So listen to um, um, Ricky Smiley. And re remember, like I said, what I want y'all to hear is not about this man wearing a dress. I want y'all to hear how he justifies wearing a dress because everybody else wore a dress, which is so gay. And let me address uh, all of the, 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 the things with uh, Gary. You can help me out with this because. And Gary. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think there's another guy named Gary, Gary he's on the phone with, but just for the record, um, Ricky Smiley has always did his Ricky Smiley show with a gay dude called Gary with the T, right? And so if you just look at everything, cause he talks about all this about his manhood and now nah, nigga, no, nah, you, you, you like wearing dresses, nigga. Right. So it's like you hanging out with a gay dude on your show all the time. And then you run around wearing a dress all the time. Right. If I did a podcast, uh, Andre. And every time I go live, I'm on here with gang members. Would you think at some point I'm affiliated with a gang? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So if Steve, Hart, I mean, uh, uh, K Ricky Smiley does a show with a gay dude and also runs around portraying a woman wearing a dress, a wig and high heels when he does stand up comedy. He's a he's heavily affiliated with gayness. So just well, like people, go, with, go ahead. <clears throat> Let's go, go back to the, and we have to be honest, uh, also when it comes to Ricky Smiley uh, and, and, and Ty Perry, where did they get the comfort from to do this? And what, in other words, what audience allowed them to be comfortable with this? No, 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 men, men, the men don't operate like that. Hold on, the hold on, hold on. Audience. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Men don't operate like that. Men. I, I, I agree with you. But what I'm talking about, where we don't, did we, don't we, we don't live off of what people think. We we operate. This is who we are. So we Correct. make choices. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead. I just want to say that. But but the reason why these <laughs> men felt comfortable enough during their plays, during their comedy skits, during uh, television shows, or even movies, 
they felt mm-hmm. comfortable with this because there's always been this undertone of uh, of LGBTQ behavior in the black church. It's always been there, whether it be the, the choir director, whether it be somebody in the choir, whether it be somebody behind the scenes, whether in some yeah. cases even the pastor. It's always yeah. been that comfort in the black church. So if you can get the black church audience to get on board with that undertone is, yes, you can, you can pretend like you sister Bertha from so-and-so and so church. Why? Because we know that that type of behavior had been accepted in the black church more than it had been. LGBTQ was accepted in the black church long before it was accepted in the in community. We had no problem with putting somebody of LGBTQ in front of that choir stand every Sunday in the name of the Lord, as long as they can direct our choir or sing and hit these notes. It could be a male and he can hit these notes. It doesn't matter how broke his wrist was. We didn't you care. You are right. I ain't even think about that. I and got so hold on. I got, I got his first audience was the church. The Ricky church. Smiley's first audience was the church in <laughs> uh, uh, the historically black colleges. So Ricky was doing black colleges in the church. Tyler Perry did the black church because you cannot go to uh, the average American heterosexual male audience and pull that off. You can't pull that off in the white community. You can't pull it off in the Latin community. Where can you pull off black men wearing uh, outfits at the beginning of their career and it catapults them? The black church. That was the So the black audience. church is part of the pushing of the feminization of men. I got a video Easy. for this right here. Easy. Listen to this. Listen to this. The black church, y'all. I told a story about the churches. I don't think so. Here in Atlanta, we wanted to buy a church out here, a building. Oh, wow. It cost a million dollars. We said, we can't afford that because we, we grassroots. Mm. So the, the minister said, hey, no, no, no. I said, we said, minister, how are you able to afford this million dollar building? He said, you go to the bank. I said, no, no, no. We, we went to the bank. All these bank, a bank, they say the churches have unreliable income because mm. one week it may be good. Hold on real quick. If you want to share your audience, uh, Andre, you can. I just thought about that. If you can, if you see it, in, okay. in the, in, uh, if you want to. Next week it might be bad because it's based <laughs> on donations. Right. He said, no, no, no. He said, Christians have a bank strictly for Christians. Oh, wow. So he gave us the address. Brothers go down there and the the clause is listen to this this is it right here the clause on how a black church gets a loan for uh you know for the building this is what you have to do in order to get the money funded for a church millions of dollars you have to teach what they want you to teach they said to us our church our teachings must align with theirs mm. you got to teach gay shit jesus is white mm. De- uh, december 25th um Christmas, yeah. uh the laws are done away with mm. i'm like we don't teach that it's, you can't get no money from us then and the churches have never revealed that was on a sneak tip the minister told us and we wow. found out whoa there's so much ins and out with the churches it will shock people so what do you think about that going back to this ricky smiley situation you know yeah He's a, he's and the whole, the, the whole feminization of, of black men in the church. It oh, all man, goes right good. along with each other, right? But in, in the, in the reason why <laughs> it was so easy for, for Ricky to imitate a, a, a female in the, in the church instead mm-hmm. of imitating a male in, in the black church, because we know just statistically that over 80 percent of most of our churches i was i'll put it at, yeah about 80 percent of most of our churches are female dominant we know yes. that when it comes to buying uh tickets to comedy events tickets to movies the the person who you sell are the women so mm-hmm. tyler perry knew when it comes to these black plays the women will bring their boyfriends because i've been to a couple of tyler perry plays when he first started like i say after the bootleg days my, my wife at that time period was like, I want to go see a Tyler Perry play. So we went and got some tickets and we went to go see a couple of Tyler Perry plays when he was coming through town. And so, mm-hmm. in other words, if these guys know that they can sell and sponsor to black women, in other words, knowing that black women are part of the, the cause of, and no offense, ladies, no offense, but you were a part of the cause of men feeling comfortable with being feminized 
in the black church. You didn't cause the feminization, but you did allow men to feel comfortable with letting down their masculinity under the umbrella of, well, he's the, the choir director. Oh, but mm. or, well, he can sing these top notes. Or, well, we still love pastor as long as he speak, speaks the word. But you know, and I know, what pastor doing in the, in the pastor's office, but we don't say nothing about it. And a lot of mm. you ladies didn't say nothing about it. He wasn't sleeping right. with Irma. He was sleeping with Earl. Yep. I agree. Totally agree. All right, so let's get into this. Comedy greats like uh, Flip Wilson played Geraldine. Richard so, played some roles on his show. Uh, Jamie so, Fox played Wanda. Uh, Martin played Shanene. Uh, hold on, hold on. Before we get in this, real quick, we got to play play this commercial real quick because we we, we got to get people together. Meet up at a coffee shop and play this fun dating card game. We'll have fun and see. If What are you doing? And play this fun dating card. Hey, how about we meet up at a coffee shop and play this fun dating card game? We'll have fun and see if we're compatible all at the same time. Ooh, what's the name of the game? It's called Deeper Discussions. Mmm, I'm down. Okay, meet you at six. Fellas, buy this card game. Ladies, buy this card game. Buy about two or three card games and give them out for Christmas. The main reason why people can't stay together isn't because they don't like each other no more. It's actually because their present family issues come up or their past family issues come up. But when you play deeper discussions, you'll be able to understand a person's family issues up front. This game can be played with either two people or an entire group. So have fun. Question number one. Name a time when money was the main factor why a relationship went bad. Deeper discussions dating edition. Again, these cards are good for vetting a potential boyfriend, Candidate. a potential girlfriend, a potential husband, a potential wife. The texture of these cards are so soft and silky, by the way. Like, like they ain't gonna like get really wore out. After durable. I need to I, I need, Huh? What you about to say? I was about to say, uh, I need to hit you up because I'm trying to find out how to get a set out here in Columbia. I want to buy two sets from you and get a t-shirt, but. Oh yeah, you uh, get one? I'm trying to find out how to get out here in Colombia. When I went to the, the website, you had certain locations, certain countries, but Colombia wasn't on the list. So I'm, I'm gonna hit you up uh, to, do to get the cards. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. But yeah, everybody, um, I need at least, five people right now i got about four people that bought my card game already i need at least five people to buy my deeper discussions card game some of y'all don't know nothing about card games but i am here to help my community do better in the dating world and the problem that we all have is we are picking the wrong person when we're out here dating we having babies by bums and the dudes are having babies by holes. So the thing about it is we got to do better in the dating world so we can stop running around complaining about the opposite sex, right? Everybody on YouTube want to complain about the opposite sex. Everybody on TikTok want to complain about the opposite sex. Well, this is a solution to the opposite sex. It will literally help you vet the other person. So all you have to do, buy this card game, buy the card game, and have it on your table. And whenever you go out on a date, whenever you have a girl over, whenever you have a guy over, or when you, whenever you out with your home, home, home girls, you pull this card game out and y'all just play it. You just pull it up, answer, ask a question. You can play it with 10 different people, have a ball. This will help you vet the opposite sex so we would actually have a better dating experience when we're out in the world, y'all, or on online dating. So I'm here to end the single mother epidemic, end the, 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 the gender war so we can understand each other better. So buy my car game, at least five people right now, hit the link under this video. There's a shop button floating around right here or there's a shop button under this video on YouTube. There's a link over this video on, on Facebook. I need at least five people right now to buy this card game and just have it on your kitchen table or dining room table and just boom, you'll have somebody, you'll have something to play when you got somebody over your house. 
All right, so let's get into this Ricky Smiley situation. <clears throat> I, I did. Bernie Jenkins, Tyler Perry did. My dear, there's a lot of comics and a lot of comedy greats that did characters for the sake of funny, for entertainment, for the sake of the land. No, for the sake of money, sir. For the sake of money, not funny. And it has nothing to do with nobody's uh, comfortable in the role. Nobody wants to put on a, a, a damn dress or... or so he says nobody wants to put on a dress, right? So hold on, let me let me back it up because th this this is I think this is most important than any other video that I played. Making a decision that nobody would ever cheat on me. Hold on, making a to... making a decision. <laughs> I hope. And let me address uh, all of the the, the the things with uh, Gary. You can help me out with this because you know comedy greats like. Uh, Flip Wilson played Geraldine. Richard Pryor played some roles on his show. Uh, Jamie Foxx played Wanda. Uh, Martin played Shanae. So right here, what he's saying is it's okay to dress up like a woman and dance around like a bitch because other men have danced around like bitches. You see the justification? And this is the problem that I have with Ricky Smiley in particular out of all these comics, because it sounds like you enjoy doing the shit and you justify your behavior. I literally hate it when anybody justifies bad behavior. If you did it because you're broke, say it, I did it because I'm broke. When I was young, I sold crack to, to buy school clothes. I'm not proud of it. I'm not going to say, well, so-and-so sold crack. Well, so-and-so sold crack. Why not? No, I did it because I was a bum and I got tired of having holes in my shoes and we lived in poverty. And part of it was I wanted to get out of the hood and get some money for myself so I can leave my mama house and get my own apartment. So I sold dope in order to get out of the hood. All right. I didn't sell dope, but sell dope because it was cool. I didn't even like selling dope. See, that's the thing. Say I didn't like wearing a dress. I didn't. I didn't want to wear a dress. It was. I. I felt emasculated, but I had to do it because I was broke. Instead of all this bullshit, a uh, Martin Lawrence wore a dress. Who cares? You're a grown ass goddamn man who makes decisions for yourself, and you run around trying to throw everybody out. Well, everybody else did it. So if everybody jump off a bridge, you want to jump off a bridge too, old bitch ass nigga? I'm sick of these men doing this shit. This is what women do, bro. And, what and are your this, thoughts this, on that shit, bro? This impact the masculinity of, uh, on purpose, or even subconsciously, of the black yeah. males. Yes. Notice, I, why, why, earlier when, when you were showing the broadcast, I was trying to think of the white comedians that I know that blew up and and which one of them wore dresses? I can't think of John Ritter uh, from Three's Company everywhere in the dress. I can't think of Don Knotts. Uh, I can't think of uh, uh, Don Ru uh, Don Rickles everywhere in the dress. Stein, I can't think Stein of Rocco Marks everywhere in the dress. I can't think of, I'm trying to think of the white comedian that blew up Rodney Dangerfield everywhere in the dress, George oh. Carlin everywhere in the dress. I'm trying oh. to think of which, come on, he, he, he named off about five or six very famous black male comedians that wore dresses for his justification. I'm trying to think of if you can, if, if you don't need to wear a dress to blow up the, the, the other Rob, he said, Robin Williams. Okay. Let's get, we, we could take one. This dude Robin named, Williams, uh, uh, is, is he deleted himself. So I'm just saying, you see what I'm saying? I can't remember seeing John Ritter in a dress. So the white men that wore dresses are dead. The white men in the few that the comments are naming off are a few, like Tim Conway. Absolutely correct. I remember Tim Conway on on, on the Carol Burnett show did absolutely correct. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. Jim Carrey wore a dress. When did Jim Carrey wore a dress? I can't think oh. of when Jim Carrey wore a dress. And you know what? He did wear a dress on the episode on 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 uh, uh on uh because he had the he had his hair in pigtails. 
Yeah, I just remember. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. I'm just saying, man. Oh, it's, it's, it's bad, man. So let's let's keep going, man. But I, I just hate the justification. So also wore a dress, so I could wear a dress. No, sir. You're yeah. a bitch. Um, uh, I did. Bernie Jenkins, Tyler Perry did. My dear, there's a lot of comics and a lot of comedy greats that did characters. No, sir. They are gay. For the sake of funny. For no, they sold their asses for the sake of money. Y'all niggas are prostitutes for white men. And you need to be ashamed of your damn self. Entertainment for the sake of the laugh. And it has nothing to do with nobody's uh comfortable in the role nobody wants to put on a, a, a damn dress or, or comfortable in it you know uh uh that has nothing to do with my man check out right here what he's about to say this is this is this is what's hilarious um, uh i did <clears throat> bernie jenkins tyler perry did my dear there's a lot of comics and a lot of comedy greats that did characters and there's a lot of comedy greats who didn't have to do that shit and they was just funny naturally and then had to walk around a goddamn dress twerking like a bitch in order to goddamn make somebody laugh. They told jokes. Can you say jokes, Ricky Smiley? For the sake of funny, for entertainment, for the sake of the laugh. And it has nothing to do with nobody's uh, comfortable in the role. Nobody wants to put on a, a, a damn dress or, or comfortable in it, you know. Uh, uh, that has nothing to do with. So this is a man that walks out on stage with high heels on. Talking about nobody finds it comfortable wearing a dress. So why is you doing it, bro? My manhood. A bullshit? Hold on, back up. Uh, Flip Wilson played Geraldine. Richard Pryor played some roles on his show. Uh, Jamie Foxx played Wanda. Uh, Martin played Shanene. Um, uh, I did. Bernie Jenkins, Tyler Perry did. My dear, there's a lot of comics and a lot of comedy greats that did characters for the sake of funny, for entertainment, for the sake of the laugh. And it has nothing to do with nobody's uh, comfortable in the role. Nobody wants to put on a, a, a damn dress or, or comfortable in it, you know. Uh, uh, that has nothing to do with my manhood. A bullshit? A bullshit? Being lessened for uh trying to play a role and trying to put food on the table for my family so if a woman sold ass in order to put food on the table to feed her family would we look at her a certain kind of way andre yeah yeah so so a woman can sell her ass to put food on the table and we still gonna look at her as a whore she could turn around and say hey I did everything and I did this and did that because I'm trying to put, you don't justify your behavior. Let me read these super chats real quick. Uh, shout got out. Chaos Reigns in the back as well. Oh, okay. So shout out to K Bragg. I appreciate you for these super chats on this church thing. Say what you will, but black women will tolerate a caricature of a black woman before that of a black man this dress thing is a double slight emasculation of black men and denigration of black women i'm gonna read that again because that was so profound on the church thing say what you will but black women will tolerate a caricature of a black woman before that of a black man which means black women prefer to be around black men that act like women instead of being around masculine black men. And I totally agree with that. The dress thing is a double slight, the emasculation of black men and the denigration of black women. Then she comes back with another super chat. Shout out to UK Bragg. Using white comedians as an example is disingenuous because the alphabet has always been a part of their culture going back to the Romans, not ours. Great point. Good it's point. not a comparison. It won't, it don't com compromise them. 
I agree. K Bragg, I appreciate you. You are killing it with these profound super chats. Thank you. That that's that that that's crazy. That's crazy. But yeah, so it's not black women's fault. It's these gay ass, punk ass black men's fault for um uh walking around wearing dresses and shit like bitches. But the thing about it is, my biggest issue with this is the future, right? Um, these men have children, right? Um, Ricky Smiley has children. Ricky Smiley has grandchildren. Uh, Martin Lawrence has children. Jamie Foxx, I think, has children. Medea doesn't have children because he's most likely into men, right? So, because I, I don't think he don't have children, right? Who me? No, no. Medea. No, we're, we're, we're looking. We're looking to have our first. Uh... No, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Oh no, Tyler Perry doesn't know. Right. So Tyler Perry don't have children, right? So I'm not as mad as Tyler Perry because he doesn't have children, right? Like, please, Tyler Perry, never have children. All right. He has a son. Oh my God. How many kids does Tyler Perry have? According to the TV Nada. show, Tyler Perry's son, Amon, means the world to him. Oh my God. So yeah, Tyler Perry too. All these punk ass men running around, dancing around in dresses. Your children are looking at y'all, right? So it's like you put your damn integrity on the line for some goddamn money and you don't give a damn about your legacy. Now you're going to have your damn son run around twerking in a damn dress. That is just sad. So, yeah, Tyler Perry also. So these men run around just justifying their behavior and acting like bitches. But you're going to make your, your child a bitch because you a damn bitch. And I have a problem with that because of the legacy. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a prop. It's, it's nothing more than a prop. It's nothing more. No, it's not a prop. It's bigger than a prop. We got to stop making excuses, well, man. And uh, uh, a, a way to get a laugh. I mean, back to Jenkins. Uh, Nisi Nash, uh, we did a thing called The Pew. It's supposed to be like The View, but it was a church-based version of... And like you say, it's always church-based, because that's where it comes the from. The View and... Uh, it Jenkins. Uh, N uh, to see Bernie Jenkins, the character, and Medea. And I started off doing Bernie Jenkins, uh, doing prank phone calls on the on the uh, Buck right. Wild Morning Show in Birmingham, which spinned into... Hey, I think you should do a character. This would be a great character for this role. So we were all in our 30s, uh, uh, late 20s, doing what we had to do in order to be successful. Now that we, we are older, I'm comfortable in my job in uh, radio. Ah, uh, so now I'm comfortable in my job at radio, but I think he still does stand up. And he comes out in the Bernice shit still. I, I, as far as I know, I might be wrong. I'm comfortable in... Uh, you know, the roles that I get and the things that I, I get to do. And I just finished a, a phenomenal comedy special. So so the statement about Ricky Smiley is not funny. I've been sold out since 97. Every, every single show I have done since 97, maybe not big arenas, but I, I pack up those theaters and, 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 and have to add shows and comedy clubs and between radio and all while wearing a damn dress though can you sell out a, a comedy show without wearing a goddamn dress that's the damn question yo chaos what's going on can you hear me hello yeah what's up with you how you doing yes uh thank you mr Leco. um yeah this is a very nice excellent little take and breakdown more into what cat Williams has said on club shay shay the thing with the um gay part or what they call homosexuals, or what we want to label them today, right? Mm -hmm. It is evident that when it comes to the other groups of comedians, the non-blacks, right, Miss like um, mm -hmm. Andre, there's a point that someone will eventually dress up now, or they might have once in blue, but no one really know about it because we don't really go back to some of these films they did. You get me? But when it comes huh? to black black comedians, mm -hmm. for the last, let's say, mm, maybe 30 years, maybe even close to 40, but we'll say 30, we see some that are well famous now. They really started off got recognized by putting on a dress. 
from what so, we know. What's from your what point? We you know, like from Jamie Foxx. Um, who else? What's your point, though? So, uh, um, th- for anybody to make money in this business, they have to have some on you. That's why you see Catwoman. If you listen closely, they got nothing on him because he works for himself. It's like the the, the state with the four laws power. Um, he's still rich. That. Hold on. So he's still rich. So. What you just said goes against everything you just said then. Not really. You don't have to wear all this bullshit in order to get rich and make it in this business. He sells out comedy shows everywhere. He has, what, 19 or whatever comedy specials? So, no, everything you just said is a lie but it, because it, it, Pat it, Williams shows you is a lie. No, but you got to understand. He has to. He knows the ins and outs to the point where it said, if you want to get ahead, you might do this. And the those that decide to do it, they do. And the ones that don't, you're going to make your money on your own and chaos, yes he's rich chaos, and he's chaos. rich oh whoa 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 chaos you're either good at what you do or you're not these other niggas ain't good at what they do so they gotta wear dresses and dance around like bitches okay tyler perry started off dancing around like a bitch with a dress on okay nice. that was who he was so at the end of the day these niggas want to wear dresses because they like the shit or some of these dudes like uh kevin so hart this, he's uh, a manly so dude that and that, and that so, are already that but, direction they're already hold on. um the hold on those. man hold on nobody's gonna make me wear no goddamn dress okay i know that so the thing about it is it has to be in you to do this gay shit for you to do this gay shit Men don't do this gay shit. All right. We have man laws. I don't even pee next to another man when I'm in a damn bathroom. I'll skip one. We all have like un unspoken yeah, yeah. man laws. So what about wearing a fucking dress? You think that's not a man law? No, these men know what they're doing. They're either gay or half gay. They probably wore a dress when they was children. All these men one, being one raised person. by women. Ricky Smiley and all these other niggas were raised by women. Tyler Perry, Ricky Smiley, Martin raised Lawrence. These niggas was raised by women. Mm-hmm. Their mamas probably dressed them up in dresses when they was little. This shit Ooh. is in these niggas. Oh, they were big the women ain't gonna like children. that, man. They ain't gonna like that. They said, they're gonna say, what? They said, Mr. Leko, you saying that these, these mothers were raised, have, have these boys put in dresses from the start before they start going their careers in the community uh, business? Bro, don't I always talk about single motherhood and how dysfunctional and destructive yeah, yeah. single motherhood it. is? I've seen it. I've seen it. Because it starts with the freaking mama. Their mamas. Yeah. So hold on. Let me let me read these super chats. Katina Provest, thank you for the uh super for the super sticker. Uh tiny two two Real talk. No father wants to see his son do anything soft. Facts. I love my ad block. Dirty uh, celebrity TV media on YouTube has Dave Chappelle in a dress twice. I don't, I don't know what that is. I would like to see it, but I'll look it yeah, up. Yeah, I'm, no. I'm here about that. I, I, somebody got to lead me to where that is. That's factual with Dave Chappelle. Oh, I don't really let, let me let me say this. Let me say this because yeah. uh, I may be able to take a clip out of it if I can find it fast enough. But mm-hmm. um, I called up my daddy last night. Yeah, it was last night. Cause I was doing a show about this. I called up my own daddy, right? I said, dad, what would you think if I got a role that made me a millionaire or whatever, mm-hmm. and I wore a dress? He said, I would be embarrassed, son. And I said, thank you. My daddy don't want to see me in no goddamn dress. My children don't want to see me in no goddamn dress. These grown ass men out here acting like bitches and they have children and they have parents that are embarrassed of them. Because here's the thing with the time. Where is that? This nigga literally says it right here. Listen to this shit. But that and raising the family uncomfortable with what what makes me sad. uh, I don't like the way that made my kids feel. I don't like the way that made my kids feel. I don't like the way that made my kids feel. Kevin told you he wasn't going to wear no dress until Uh-oh. they offered him the dress, and then he put Uh-oh. it on. And what did he say after he wore it? 
I made my own decision. So I want to I, I, I want to say this to, to Ricky Smiley. Your children were embarrassed of you wearing a dress a long time ago, sir. You actually think they waking up today hearing what Cat Williams said and be like, oh, my God, wait, my dad was wearing a dress when I never seen it. I'm embarrassed. You think it took them to be embarrassed of your half gay ass? Because Cat Williams said something? If they are embarrassed of you wearing a dress now, they've been embarrassed of you wearing a dress. Sir, fuck is you talking about? What do y'all think? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it just goes back to it just goes back to at the end of the day, some some guys are willing to to uh, go back past man code when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. They'll sell their souls when it when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's a coincidence that over the last maybe 10, 15 years that people have been coming out. Entertainers, actors, uh, writers, singers have been coming out telling that there are some things that go on on the caster room couch that a person has to do. I don't think it's coincidence that everybody is from Taraji all the way to way back in the day when other actors were saying this and other comedians and so forth. I don't think it's coincidental. And back to what you were saying, there has to be something already in you to make you feel comfortable with putting on the dress as a man. Mm -hmm. Whether you be, be, uh, I mean, even you, you, you can't even sit back and say that about Prince. Even Prince would tell you, Hey, Hey, uh, hey, I might put on these boots, these boots to make me a little taller, but I'm not about to put on no dress. Mm -hmm. You know, like he said to Michael Jackson when it came to the uh, the the, uh, the I'm bad video, he's like, when the first line said, "Your butt is mine," and he said, "Well, wait a minute, whose butt is whose? Are you talking about me and you? My butt is yours, or you're saying that your butt is mine?" He said, "Either way, I'm not gonna be in your music video just because of that one line doesn't dance with what I'm saying." So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, oh, even with Prince, he's, he, came back. yeah, yeah, talking about Prince, but he still walked with certain standards that he wouldn't, certain lines he wouldn't cross. He was not going to put on a dress for anybody. Right. But at the end of the day, you it has to be something in you as a man to make you feel comfortable with that. And a lot of us, if you become comfortable with it, a lot of it is because you were raised in a predominantly female environment in which you were allowed to be subconsciously impacted or or manipulated into being comfortable with that. It's not about the, the dress wearing. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the fact that these men at one point in time had be, had to become comfortable with this. And that's what that's what people aren't catching on to. If you're sitting back and you are 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 a person that that's that's a uh, NASCAR driver. You sit back, you see a lot of NASCAR drivers. They've been driving since they were 12 years old. They were around the daddy or the granddaddy, and they taught them how to fix cars, repair cars, drive cars. That's why they're some of the best car drivers in the world. They didn't just all of a sudden start doing that. So it is with any other craft. So it is with if you're going to put on a dress. Somehow, some way, you are already prepared <laughs> mentally for when that moment came. You were ready to put that dress on and go on go on Saturday Night Live on Saturday Night Live, Kevin Hart, and actually be comfortable in front of global television. Now, right, you can get put on a dress and a movie will bomb, and nobody might even know about it for twenty years. But mm -hmm. on Saturday Night Live, everybody going to see you in that dress live. Question: so You had to mentally prepare yourself when that moment in time came, and they asked you. Would you put this dress on? And you said yes. That's because you are already mentally prepared to put that dress on. So let me ask a question. I remember when Dave Chappelle said it when he was offered that. Um, what's back in the early 2000s, right? And he with, with actually, it was with actually with the 90s, my fault, in late 90s when it was with Martin Lawrence, that movie with Martin Lawrence, right? And he said no. And he had to emphasize no. And they come up with a new script and everything just like that. So they're testing Martin Black Man where your manhood stands. And if you accept it, like you said, either two things, either you were in you already, and or you're raised by your parent, like that single mother, trained it as okay to be a little bitch. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. 
That's the only thing that will lead to why most of them do that. Correct? Because it takes a lot for a man to sit there and degrade himself just for a piece of paper. Like, literally. And this is manhood we're talking about. And lastly, the only thing you have in life is you stand on your, your principle. And I see enough black men that's accepted that tells you two things, that you already, that direction, right? That weirdo direction or something else. Because if you stand on something, you will not take, you will not degrade yourself with no paper whatsoever to millions of people. That's why I think they select these men very carefully to put in front of us. That's why if you think about Andre, you, your household, you don't watch TV. I have not watched TV consistently for over a decade. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, because now the direction they're taking now is they're fully indoctrinating our young people that this is acceptable behavior. And the only way you're going to achieve is you got to be a, a chick. And that's where the danger starts. All right, y'all. The the this is a really, it's really good propaganda if you think about it. If people not Hold care. On. Hold on, y'all. I got the um. I just recorded a video from my last live. Okay. About um talking to my dad. So give me y'all. Y'all can finish talking, but I'm just yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk as you as you find. Yeah. So yeah. like I said, Andre. There's only a few men that's gonna be strong to not give in, and there's some that they select say, you know, you do this not, and then you make the decision at the end of the day. But really, when we talk about principle and manhood, that last you want to be, especially as a black man in the West, you don't want to be perceived yourself as some chick. You get me? For the whole world to see, because now people have say, a perception. Say the last part again. Say the last a part chick. again. I'm trying to watch my language. As Remember, as we black man in the West. What would you say? To be like chicks, if you know what I mean. I'm not used to be word. Okay. And, and Miss Leco understands what I'm saying because you know we, we monetize. So you know, we were trying to watch. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, so. All right, hold on. Give me one second. It's yeah, uploading so, now. Everybody in the you. chat, if y'all want to hold on, if everybody in the chat right now, put a one in the chat if y'all want to see this video that I did with my dad because I asked him what would he think of me if I took an acting role and wore a dress. If you want to hear what my dad had to say about that, put a one in the chat. If you would like to hear what my own father had to say about me potentially wearing a dress in an acting role, put a one in the chat. All right. So y'all want to hear because I always like to make sure because sometimes people don't want to see something. They want to see some Cat Williams stuff. So I want to make sure y'all want to see it. All right. Check this out. Um. Mr. Echo, you're still not a thousand likes. We have 700 people. That, everybody hey, the like YouTube button. talking about. Oh, yeah. Hold on, y'all. Can y'all make sure to hit the like button? Y'all still ain't hitting the like button. Everybody hit the like button. Y'all hitting these ones. I appreciate that. But hit the like button also. Share this you, video. You want you want to get at least a thousand. You need like 40 likes and you get the 1K before you play. It. All right. So all we need is 40 more likes, y'all. We just need 40 more likes and we'll be at a thousand likes. Just do that for me. 40 yeah, more. Right. All right, here we go. Yeah, 40. Okay. So this is me talking to my father. Question. I'm on YouTube talking about. <laughs> hey, dad. Yeah. Hey, I got a quick question. A quick question. I'm on YouTube talking about. Um. Um. Like Cat Williams and the, and the, um and then, you know they 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 kind of like going back and forth or whatever right and Cat talking about what? I'm talking about Cat Williams the community the uh, comedian oh, yeah, Cat yeah, Williams yeah. right so he is talking about how Tyler Perry and you know a lot of these uh, comedians they actually sold sold out and wore dresses and because of that Tyler Perry is a billionaire right um and and there's a bunch of them that you know it wasn't just a few of them almost every comedian wore a dress and somebody just asked me in the chat would like would you how would you look at me i'm not gonna do it but just a question how would you look at me if i actually made it but i wore a dress making it like how would you look at me as my father well first off you disrespected yourself thank you yeah. See, this is my daddy right here. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, it's not enough money in the world for you to uh, internationally or locally disrespect yourself for any reason or in any amount of money. 
That's why you're my daddy. This is the man that this this is the man that instilled all of the manhood in 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 my life. This is what I'm talking about. Dad, real quick, tell them about how you made me run to the literary bell at five years old and I'm crying and you just uh, had me running anyway. Well, I knew you could do it because uh, we didn't do that right off out the gate. We built up the... Oh, yes. Hold on one second. Somebody said they can't. My cash app is cash app dollar sign A-A-R-O-N 1000. It's right here. Hold on. Let me put the banner across. Somebody asked me about the cash app. Hit the cash app. Thank you for asking for that because I forgot about it. So now my cash app is running across the bottom of the screen. So my cash app is Aaron 1000, two A's, A-A-R-O-N 1000. And don't forget about the dollar sign. Thank you for reminding me about the cash app. Hit the cash app, y'all. <laughs> Remember, we would take the short runs first. Mm-hmm. And um, progressively build on that uh, the mileage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw you doing it. You wanted to quit, but I knew that you could go further. That's right. I could look at you and tell if you were going to be in respiratory distress or something. Mm -hmm. But none of that was obvious. Right. So we went on and ran those 10 miles. Uh, what is it? 10 and a half miles. Mm hmm to and from mm -hmm. without any problems. And that's a question for you. So, yeah. So that's just an example of what was instilled in me, okay? My dad literally had us running 10 miles each way early in the morning when I was five, six, seven years old. I ain't wearing no goddamn dress because I had a daddy and a lot of you niggas didn't have daddies and that's why y'all act like bitches and that's the damn problem and that's why I'm on YouTube talking my shit mm -hmm. because I was raised in a way that you niggas was not raised. Yeah. <clears throat> all right all right guys I have to step through um I'm trying to hit you an email you know what I'm saying I'm not sure we doing stream tonight I am but, you know, like I said, I got to look at this more carefully. But like I said, this is a good live stream. Um, Cat Wimps has stirred up 2024 again and let yes, you know sir. that if you're not hearing from the true, then you're not hearing anything at all, man. That's why nobody likes him. They always say he's crazy. And I always think, why they always say this man is crazy? Oh, I see why. You know why. So obviously, And here's one thing. Not every comedian is now speaking up on this. And it tells you. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Speaking of that. Yeah. I got a comedian speaking up on it, not, not really speaking on, on this in particular, but speaking on what's actually happening. So here's my guy, Ryan Davis. Check this out. All right. Industry, I might be guys. specific Let's enough. All Let right. me help you out, little Nas X. I'll give you questions that you can answer. All right. Hold on, let me back it up. Shout out to Ryan Davis. Why is it working? Oh, right, here we go. I've noticed everybody who's quote unquote exposing the industry aren't being specific enough. So let me help you out, little Nas X. I'll give you questions that you can answer. All right, so you came out with Old Town Road uh, back in December uh, 2018, all right? And after that, there was a bidding war in which you decided to sign the Columbia Records in March 2019. And then by May 2019, you had the biggest song in the history of the world. It is the longest running number one hit ever with Old Town Road. And you were going to elementary schools and surprising children. Your fan base was primarily made up of children. You were the next biggest star to the youth. How in less than a year did you go from this image to this image? Was it your idea? Was it Columbia's idea? What was it? That's one question I need to, I, I need you to answer. Leather and lace, my nigga, that is a highly sexual <laughs> look that you're going for for somebody who children support. And you knew you had children's support. And by the time your next album, Montero, came out, everything was highly sexual. Were you pushed to push these sexual images on children? Or was this your idea? Were you never the cowboy? You wanted to be this highly sexual person the whole time? Or was that something you were made to do knowing that children was your primary audience? 
Keyword children, y'all. Keyword children is affecting the children. For those who go just like just like how my dad made me run 10 miles, he was affecting his children. See how affecting the children can cause you to be a real nigga versus a bitch. Well, he's a grown man. You know, he can't help the children to watch him. No, nah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that because you have images like this that are posted in Teen Vanity Fair magazine. Teen. So obviously they know who the target audience is with everything that he does. And now supposedly he's going to make gospel music and he has to fight his label to become independent again. Back to the church. Which is what yep. he's supposed to be exposing amongst you're right. Back to the damn church. Other things, I just want to know if the industry is really demonic, like you say, how much of the decisions that you made about your image and the imagery that you put out was your idea or theirs? Was it your idea to have a demonic shoe or was it their idea to have a demonic shoe? Questions. I need answers. So shout out to Ryan Davis. He he made a great point. Let me get these uh, super chats. Uh, shout out to Tiny 2.0. I'm not with the idea of single parenting. Fathers must be present or you are the part of the freaking problem. And shout out to, of course, Andre for the uh, super sticker. I appreciate that. But yeah. But yeah, man. Um, see, they you you, you can have. Um, these dudes to, to run out, run around trying to get some attention. Yeah, I'm going to expose the industry. Okay, expose yourself, though. Don't expose the industry like Ryan Davis is saying. Expose yourself. When you signed to Columbia Records and you was just an old country road person and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you start doing all this gay shit, did Columbia Records push you to do that or did you want to do it? And if you wanted to do it, why are you acting like you don't want to be gay no more? Like, what you doing? That's what you need to expose. What's happening with you? Just like, just like then. I just called, last night, I randomly just called my daddy up and was like, Daddy, what do you think about this? I randomly exposed myself. We got to expose ourselves before we run around trying to expose other people. What's the dumb shit that we doing? Y'all know that uh, I left my marriage and people love talking. Ah, you left your marriage, right? Yes. I'm the one that divorced my ex-wife. I exposed I myself. Too. I did too. And you did too. Right. Mm -hmm. So we got to expose ourselves before we want to run around disposing. I mean, exposing the industry because we all do dumb shit. We got to expose our dumb shit first before we expose other people's dumb shit. True. I'm just saying. So true. All right. So back to the receipts. Because y'all know I got receipts left and right. Here come Tyler Perry, old punk ass. For the most part, than yeah. black men, right? In our society right now, mm -hmm. black women are making a lot more money for the most part than yeah. black men. No, they're not. They, it's, I'm so it, tired of hearing that narrative. Bro, this bitch, this is what I'm saying. This bitch ass nigga. It's not just running around, flaunting around, dancing and shit like a bitch with the dresses. He's saying dumb shit, too, when he's a man. So it's like he's dumb when he's a woman and he's dumb when he's a man. When are you not dumb, sir? Man, right. There are a lot of black men who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you if you no, can find they love, aren't. Let's look, if that man works statistically the average black woman only makes 36 to 42 thousand dollars today i just looked it up not even a week ago that i don't think mm -hmm. anything has changed dramatically over a week into this year so when i when right. i hear black women say this when i hear uh, black simps say this statistically it is not true black women are making more money than black women have had in the past yes but you are not making more than your black male counterparts, white women. You are not making more than Asian, uh, uh, East India. You are not making more than white males. So to sit back and say, we balling now, girl, statistically, there are only a few of less than 9%. Less than 9% of black women are making even over $80,000 a year. 
Fact. So you other 91 percenters, stop it. Get some help. And that's what I'm saying, man. So that's what I'm saying. So um, so he's acting like sounding like a bitch right here. In our society right now, mm -hmm. black women are making a lot more money for the most part. Than then he acts like a bitch. That's the wrong. Then he acts like a bitch right here. Camera. <laughs> oh, I'm Bernie Jenkins. I'm from the. She oh 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 and all pop. Here's the thing, y'all. This is your leader. This is the man that y'all want to actually follow. Are you Hold serious? Hold my mule while I shout missionary event. Bernice, I'm gonna take this cigarette and offer you as a burnt offering to the Lord if you don't yeah. shut up. The men all pause when I walk into the room. The men all pause and they all say. That's who you want to listen to? Yes, they this do. Bitch ass dude. Right. There are a lot of black men who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you, if you can find love, if that man works, you know, at whatever job mm -hmm. and is a good man. And is good to you, mm -hmm. and honors and honors the house, you know, and honors you know, his wife, and does what he can, mm -hmm. because his his gift may not. You Go know ahead. what Tyler Perry is an example of. What? Tyler Perry is an example of if black women want to build a black man and take him to the next level of life, they can if they want to. That's who Tyler Perry is. And there are other men out there that have done some of the things that Tyler Perry has done. And black women built these men. Now, everyday heterosexual men, oh, we don't get that. We, we don't get that type of encouragement from our own sisters. Not all, but many sisters. I'm going to say this again. Not all sisters are like this, but many sisters will build, up, will build the wrong man up. And that's what Tyler Perry is. So when I sit back and I hear that, that, that black women can't build up a black man. I do believe that black women actually can because Tyler Perry is a perfect example of it wasn't white people that built Tyler. It wasn't black males or white women that built Tyler Perry. It, Tyler Perry became a billionaire selling lies and ideas majority to black women. You made a black man into a billionaire. So if you can do that for one man, encourage another one man to, to be great, why is it so problematic in the black community for black women to build up other black men that are heterosexual? Right. So you see what I'm going with that? You, yeah, he's a perfect example that black women can, if a black woman gets behind a black man and encourages him and supports him, and I'm just talking about every, every average everyday guys, look what you can accomplish. You black women got behind one dude that put a dress on and you made him a billionaire. How much exactly. more could you do by putting by standing behind the backs of black men that are heterosexual and build those guys up as well? That is a fact. Housing security in the U.S. since the pandemic. So this is just proof that black women are not making no goddamn money. Is on track to become a crisis. A crisis. And black women are being affected the most by it. A crisis. And black women are being affected the most by it. A crisis. And black women are being affected the most by it. Renters at risk of eviction as of January spiked to about 3 million and counting. And watch how many black women is part of that 3 million being evicted. And of those... Black women have the highest average of eviction filed against them at 6.2%. Now that equates to one in four black renters living in a place where black eviction filing rates were almost double than that of their white counterparts. A lot of times the studies say black women are the highest growing number of entrepreneurs. And we have been for the past 15, 20 years. That don't mean that we making money. Don't be fooled by the data. They just say we leaving. They just say we getting paid. They just say we leaving. They didn't say that we were thriving. They said that we're leaving to create a business. And LLC equals zero dollars. <laughs> Somebody saying that they're a consultant or a coach equals zero dollars. That means nothing. Pause when I walk into the room. The men all pause and they all sung the same old tune. She oh 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 oh. And she oh oh. Hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button. Y'all check this out if y'all haven't seen this. 
This actually uh happened outside of Club Shay Shay when uh <laughs> when uh Cat Williams left Club Shay Shay. Does anybody nobody's talking about this? This is what happened after Cat Williams left Club Shay Shay. <laughs> Hold on, I got back up. Oh, Jesus. That's the wrong camera. <laughs> the oh, all pause when I walk into the room. The men all pause and they all sung the same old tune. She, oh, 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 oh. And she, oh, oh. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He, 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 now here now check out uh when, when uh shannon sharp comes out check this out oh we got a problem here this is look, shannon at shannon. look at shannon sharp hey 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 kev you you didn't say nothing to cat williams when he did a three-hour <laughs> uh, interview talking slow yesterday <laughs> So yeah, man. Um <laughs> Shout out Cat, Sharp. Cat Williams uh and Shannon Sharp has literally um put the battery behind battery in my back, battery in your back, you know, the, the masculine men, the men who are uh for family, the men who are actually looking to uh push their culture forward and uh I'm accepting the battery and I'm I, I want another battery, damn it. You know what I'm saying? And I want to put a battery in somebody else's back and I want to keep this thing going. This 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 wig wearing. I don't want I have a problem with anybody wearing a wig. I got a problem with women wearing wigs. I got a problem with Steve Harvey punk ass wearing wearing a man wig. I got a problem with these women doing the shit. And I'm definitely problem got a problem with all these goddamn comedians wearing wigs. Like, can we just go back to being ourselves? If you're not funny as yourself, go drive for Uber, okay? If you're not talented by yourself, go work for McDonald's, all right? If you can't get a man without wearing a goddamn wig, go get your fat ass in the gym and fix your body. Like, we got to stop doing dumb shit in order to make it and, 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 the, and the other part about the wigs and I'm, I'm just like you i'm not i'm not into the hair helmets um right. the other thing i just watched a headline that most people don't know that most of those hairs that come from india they come out of the sewer they actually take the hairs out of see they'll show you like like a lot of women will look at the chris rock special about all his movie in regards to the hair and they'll see like, well, they go into the temples and they're cutting off the hair of the women from India and the hair is taken away. So, you know, it's so sweetly. That's not true. Actually, in India, most of you women that are getting your weaves from those locations from from of the Middle East, they actually are getting the hairs literally out of the sewers. It's so also stop right like there, Andre. That. Stop right there, Andre. I got the receipts. Got the receipts, y'all. Affordable human hair extensions come from city drains. That's right. In India, workers actually collect hair from public drains and plug holes. They clean and treat this hair, making it look nice and shiny. But the truth is, it's not virgin hair. It's straight from the drains. This is the only reason human hair extensions are still affordable. Otherwise, they would all cost thousands of dollars. It's a hidden secret of the beauty industry, and many don't know about it. There is a term called fallen hair. This is hair that is literally swept up after haircuts, hair that is just found out all over the place. It doesn't need to match in color, doesn't need to match in length, and it's literally just bunched together. They sweep this shit up, and there are even certain circumstances and instances where they will take uh, hair from an unalived person, and that is very common. They take all this fallen hair, hair from unalived people, they bunch it together, they brush it out into a ponytail. It doesn't matter whether or not the cuticles are aligned. It doesn't matter. They take it all, and then they dip it into an acid bath. They coat it in silicone, which makes it really nice and soft to the touch when you get out of the package. So not only do they coat it in the silicone, they mix in synthetic fibers. 
They'll claim that it's human hair, but they will mix in a portion and percentage of synthetic fibers. So then when you're styling your brand new wigs, bundles, clip-ins, halos, falls, tapins, and you wonder why there's all this billows of smoke and smell of chemical and melty ass strands on your curling iron, you'll know, you'll remember. Yep. Never do an interview. Oh, in man, Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her. And they, she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now, understand, I'm not talking about one person. And then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this. He literally, um, Bernie Mac had, um, uh, I will say a, a starring role on Ocean's Eleven. Right. When Steve Harvey found out that Bernie Mac got selected for the role, Steve Harvey called the director of uh, Ocean's Eleven and was like, yo, why you got Bernie Mac on there instead of me? He literally did that. And that's the reason why Bernie Mac didn't like Steve Harvey because he was a backbiter and a wig wearer. And a wig wearer. And now, now you have this going trend of, and you've seen it on YouTube, of men now wearing lace fronts, but just for men. You got men with fake brush waves now. You got men with fake fades, fake mm -hmm. afros. You got men out there in the States. Cause, and the reason why I say that in the States, a lot of the times things that, that, that are taking place initially happen in the United States. Men are being emasculated there first. Yeah. And then it spreads into other locations. Like here in, the, in, the, in, in South America, among these brothers, you ain't gonna see no fake. If, if, if you're going bald, you're just going bald. If you got a fro, you got a fro. But among right. these brothers and sisters down here in South America, you will not see a man wearing fake brush waves. But we're so vain back home in the States that it's nothing to pull up on, on TikTok or YouTube and men, male wigs. And now you got men that are considered heterosexual to wear a wig. But you have to realize it took that man a few minutes to sit back or if not a few weeks to contemplate on be on becoming comfortable with wearing a wig. Yeah. To whereas nowhere else in the world you will see that. Remember this, the United States statistically only makes up 4% of the planet. Of the 9 billion people, the, the little measly 330 million of us in the United States only make up 4% of what the other 8 plus billion of the world are actually doing. We are mm -hmm. not the norm. I'll say that again. Right. We in the United States, from all my travels globally, we just got back from, from France, we just got back from UK, and we also just got back from our, our latest trip to uh to Spain just a couple weeks ago. What's up? What's the what's rest up? of the world, everywhere we go, I realize something as a US citizen. Most of the world does not think like we do. As far as entertainment right. and style and things like that, yes. But as far as uh the moral behavior. And how masculine how masculinity is seen and femininity is seen. You're in most countries, they are not saying, call me they, call me them, call me a, it it doesn't happen in most of the world. There is yeah. no change, no, no, no gender fluidity, only in the in little four percent United States where that is comfortable. Why is that? Because let's take it back to not just with LGBTQ, but what is the first foundation that made LGBTQ comfortable? The black church the made black LGBTQ church. comfortable before everybody, before politics, before, before HIV happened, before everything happened. We always allowed with silence LGBTQ to take place in the black church. And because of that, it began to spread out into politics into television, into movies. Yeah. And now you can't have a kid's cartoon now. Your kids can't even have a cartoon in the United States without an LGBTQ character. They got right. Marvel comic book characters that I grew up on that's actually doing headlines. I'm LGBTQ. Like, wait a minute. This dude was, I remember buying this dude's comic book when I was a kid. Right. Now he's a he's, he's coming out and doing th this particular 
issue of the comic book after doing being a comic book character for 40 years, he's LGBTQ. Mm. Only in the United States. So just in case you guys are wondering, is is the, the world is going crazy? No, where you are is going crazy. The other 91%, of the, the other 96% of the planet is not embracing what you think it is. You have some places like Amsterdam and, and certain areas of, of France and so forth, but most of the world is not following the pattern of this. And most of the men in the world, this is what my point is, most of the men in the world, you cannot find TikTok videos where men in, in Russia, men in South Africa, heterosexual men in China or any other part of the world where men are putting on wigs like Steve Harvey and like some of you guys now are wearing these fake brush waves in the name of trying to look good for the ladies. Mm -hmm. And so that is, that is an American thing. So don't be sitting back saying the world is going crazy. No, <sighs> that, that gender fluidity that y'all doing, don't blame the rest of the other 91% of, or the other 96% of us, uh, on, on what you guys are doing in the States because right. that is not the norm around the world. But how it started was the black church was comfortable because the black church is set about 80% of, of, of women. And that 80 80% is many of them are single mothers mm -hmm. who are comfortable with their sons, even during my age. And I'm talking about some of the starch black churches, the, yeah. the, the, the apostatals. I mean, uh, 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 the, the, uh, 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 uh the, uh, church of God in Christ church. The churches that were that were stoic still mm. had a choir director switching on stage. And black weird. women never checked that. Y'all sat up and allowed that happen. It wasn't enough black men in the church to check it. So yeah. the predominant people in the church were black sisters. And so it was easy for Tyler Perry and, and Ricky Smiley and all these other dudes to present it to you ladies. That's what I'm saying, man. Light skin. Weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, come on. Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her, and they, she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now, understand, I'm not talking about one person. And then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business, and it's a man unit. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. Real, here it is, Kevin. I got a show at your hometown in Philly. I'm going to take my special there. On that stage, we can put whatever you want. A full court basketball court. A boxing ring. Two microphones for a rap cypher. Or you can get your ass dusted in comedy on that stage. But it's one million dollars up for each one. That's five million dollars, Mr. 28 million in Forbes. But yeah, man, like I, I, I like, I like, I like, um, um how cat williams is, is doing his thing and this ain't how he just started he's been like this you know i've been like this you've been like this like i like seeing black men don't follow trends they just be themselves you know what i'm saying true true you know even right here when when gary owen says is this, this is this that point where i've always heard would you suck a dick for a million dollars and I was thinking to myself when I was in this office going in this room going, well, this is the I'm I'm about to answer this question. And the answer was no, I wouldn't. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. I watched that whole special with Gary uh, on his on his podcast. And the one thing about getting just like what you were saying, Gary Owens has been Gary Owens from the beginning. He has mm -hmm. never changed. He's always been consistent. There is no wishy washiness with him. And that's why Cat Williams said, that's why this extremely talented white dude can't even get a break because yeah. he won't sell out. He won't sell because out. Because he'd rather be a, a family man, a, rather be a, a, a an example in his community. Did yeah. he have a marriage that didn't work out eventually? We got two dudes on this podcast that have been there Our too. Our marriage didn't I mean, work yeah. out, right? But yet we're still consistent in our manhood and where we stand in our manhood. And we're not yeah. selling that out for anything. Facts. Facts. And real quick, if anybody in the chat, male or female, if y'all have a question for us, 
uh, put it in the super chat and we'll answer the question because I think this is a, a, a huge um, uh, pendulum shift, right? There's a lot of young men and there's a lot of women who may actually be looking at us like, what's wrong with wigs? What's wrong with men? Uh, uh, you know, all this crazy stuff or whatever, right? But what we're going to do in 2024, we're going to shift the pendulum back to the way it was in the 80s. Like, I want to I want to bring something up that nobody will ever think of. Do you know being tall was actually a bad thing in the 80s? I want y'all to think about that. Being tall was a bad thing in the 80s. If you were tall, you were looked at as goofy. If you were a little 6'3 dude, 6'4 dude, he's a goofball because he was lanky. Being tall wasn't even cool in the 80s. No. All the who all the hood niggas was short. Do you know the first thing that somebody put in front of their name? What's the what's what's the name main thing they put in front of their name? Lil. Lil Ronnie, Lil this, Lil that. We had a Robin crew, the leader of the Robin crew in our hood in Atlanta, well, in our neighborhood in Atlanta. Uh, his name was Lil Gerald. Everybody was scared of that nigga. Short nigga. My, uh, I had a homeboy terrorizing everybody. It was uh, Lil Pook. So it was either Big Melvin or Lil whatever, right? But big, the big people, they be fat. So the tall dudes that, you know, y'all admire and there's nothing wrong being tall. I'm just letting y'all know how life was totally opposite than it is now. Literally. Now, just think about N.W.A. All them niggas is short. Too short. His name is too short. It was actually lame to be tall. The only dude that was tall from the 80s was Snoop. Not one other rapper that came out was tall other than Snoop. Name another rapper that was tall back in the day. You can't. Ice Cube, short. Look at the movies. All the niggas in the movies. Um, everybody was damn short. Name name, name somebody in, in the movies back in the day. Uh, what What is the dude? Jamie Foxx. Uh, Jamie, Jamie Foxx. <laughs> Jamie Foxx is really short. Jamie Foxx, BM short. BMX, really short. Pac was not that tall. Pac, short. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was, uh, the, I was uh, the tall, linky kid, so I know exactly what you're talking about. I was yeah, considered yeah, linky, Jones. awkward, the, that kind of like uh, that awkward, but like a stork. You were, you were not looked up on like, like oh, he, 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 oh, good girl, he tall, he's sexy. Nobody, nobody mm -hmm. said that about us uh, mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. Nobody. It was, it was all about the dudes that were kind of like maybe 5'10 and under. A little that, short, I, stocky. I, that, that era, I do remember. We were not, we were not the it dudes. I don't mm -hmm. even know when it began to be the it thing for, you know. I want somebody that's six feet. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't remember when that began, but I do remember back when I was young. Yeah, yeah. Was two the, live crew, six feet, six feet. We were looked mm -hmm. up on like, yeah, uh, two, we were looked up on like not as not as intellectually, you know, in tune. We were weird. Up on, like the slow heads. Y'all we slow. Not yeah. always considered like. The guys that people consider to uh, talk about, yeah, you got the rare ones like the Karis. We're not saying that everybody back in the day was was uh, short. Mm -hmm. We're just saying that the end thing at that time period, like I know Dr. Dre was tall, LL Cool J was tall. I understand LL that Karis, cool oh. yeah, Dr. Dre is tall. He's the only one in the group that's over six feet. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I thought Dr. Dre was the same. Yeah, same he's the only, only tall one in the group. And yeah, so, but so, if so, you look so, at uh, movies like Love Jones. All them yep. dudes was short. Lorenz Tate, yep. Lorenz Tate was a short dude. Look at uh the gangster movies, uh 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 Menace in Society. All them niggas was short. If you look yep. at um uh damn boys in the hood, all them niggas was short. So I'm just letting y'all know it's not about short tall thing. I'm just letting y'all know that everything that y'all are seeing right now was literally the opposite back in the 80s. And we were happy. Women didn't wear wigs. 
It wasn't about uh the, the 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 six feet six. No, are you a good man or are you not a good man? We got married back then. All my friends got married. I got married. My my wise friends were married. My homeboys was married. All of us was married. Like everything back in the 80s was the opposite of now. And that's the reason why y'all are so screwed up. And I'm going to tell y'all, in the 80s, wasn't nobody wearing no goddamn dresses. It's, hold on. In the 80s, who's wearing the dresses in the 80s? Two, oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. Yeah, them niggas. Never mind, never mind. That was it. Yeah. I think Flip Wilson, I think maybe maybe once and I can't think of it, maybe one time Richard Pryor did, but I can't and I, I don't I can't prove that. But I think yeah. one time I remember him doing, but it was mainly yeah. just Flip Wilson was like the first one in the 70s and 80s to actually as a black man yeah. to actually go out there like that. Uh yeah. but uh in the 80s, you probably had uh you want to talk about Jamie Foxx when he was doing Wanda on in Living the Color. 80s or the 90s. That was that was 80, that was 80s. Was that you might be right, it might be the 90s. I think that was the 90s. That's what I'm saying. Hold on, let me see. You you might something you right it, it, it was two, remember Living Color had two eras. It had the original cast, yeah. and then it came back and they flipped it with a new remix uh -huh. of the song, a new intro, and they yeah. had a, a second wave of, of people that came through. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. But yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. So in the 80s, like things were different, things were really different, you know what I mean? So um Arsenio, Arsenio Hall coming to America. He didn't wear a dress in that movie. He, I know Arsenio Hall ended up yeah, wearing he a dress. Did. Well, in the scene, in the scene, he wore makeup too. In that scene, when they were looking for a date at the club. Yeah. And Martin was in the 80s. That day. Okay. 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 Yeah. They was wearing dresses. But okay, y'all. Okay. Okay. Y'all are right. Y'all. Y'all are right. Y'all. And Living Color first aired in 91. But I think Martin was in the 80s. When did Martin come out the show? I don't remember. Ah, 1992. Martin came out in 1992. Damn it. They wasn't doing that bullshit in the 80s. Martin came out in 1992. We had the Huxtables. And I'd be damned if any male walked in Cliff Huxtable's house with a goddamn dress on. I remember the, the Gordon Gartrell uh, episode. He came in with a Gordon Gartrell shirt and his dad was like, what the hell is that? Because it looked like a sissy shirt. Y'all remember, remember that? the episode? I remember, remember that. that Gordon Gartrell the shirt on. <laughs> yeah, he was like, take that shit out. What, what is you wearing? So no, we didn't play that shit in the 80s, God damn it. So yeah. Gordon Gartrell just sounded too gay for for uh 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 <laughs> Gordon Gartrell. <laughs> it's funny that you remember the name of the shirt. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and and real quick, shout out to uh Trajina Harrington for the twenty dollar cash app. Shout out you. Uh, shout out to you, Trajina. And let me read these. Uh, uh no more super chats. I uh, but yeah, man. I want to appreciate everybody for pulling up. This was a great uh, conversation. And I'm letting y'all know that all year long, I'm pushing family, family, family. I'm not playing with y'all. We're getting rid of all this, this bullshit. I'm sick of the, 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 the uh, Tyler Perry's. And I'm sick of the damn, uh, these dumbass females. I can't even remember the damn stupid ass woman name. The gorillas and all these stupid women tired all these goddamn people we going back to some old school lifestyle shit all right we finna start getting married we finna start stop we're gonna stop having fathers babies we're going to change the narrative and i need a lot of you dudes to wake the hell up and stop allowing women to run your damn life and start running everybody else's life like a goddamn man supposed to but tell everybody where they can uh, 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 catch you at, uh, Andre. Uh, you guys can subscribe to our channel. I'll drop the link one more time. Uh, you can subscribe to our channel, Love Crossing Borders, where we help you find love across borders or just fall in love with the borders that you cross. You don't have to necessarily fall in love with borders. We also have Mostly Money TV, where we do politics for older individuals that are looking to relocate to other countries, even with your Social Security or your ex-military. Uh, we also have uh, Travel Unraveled, where we do reaction videos 
And we also have my wife's channel, Andrea Wallace TV. So if you guys want to hear uh, from the perspective of a woman that actually is born and raised in another country and you want to see how it is from a native, you can always go to her channel. She does live streams. You guys can always question her as well. So thank you very much uh, for coming up. And you you just blessed me by taking me. Do me a favor. Uh -huh. Send me that clip of the uh, Cat Williams uh, uh, championship. I mean, the, uh, the the championship fight of uh, send me Got that, you. man. That took yeah. me back down memory lanes. I remember, the, like I said, I remember the joke when Cat Williams said that uh, all four corners of this ring are my people. Uh -huh. And every time he turned his back to a side, the crowd behind him would start cheering as if, yes, we have your back. And, and I couldn't imagine being Steve Harvey, having to stand there I was, you know, off stage and watch this man destroy your 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 stand up comedy career, and yeah. then you have to come back out because when he came back out, he said nothing. By the way, he came back out five minutes before. No, I'm I'm sorry, about two minutes before the twelve o'clock countdown for New mm -hmm. Year's Eve, and he 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 just gave you know shout out to Cat Williams, but he never responded to any of Cat Williams jokes. He knew really he even, no, he didn't say nothing, no response. All he did was come out. Is, you know, basically, thank everybody for coming out, so forth and so forth. We're about to do the countdown, 12 o'clock, and we did a countdown. I think maybe 30 minutes after that, we left, you know, everybody left. Yeah. Damn. So I'm looking for the video. Uh, I got it. I'm going to look for it somewhere because I can't send a long video. So I got it. I'm looking for the actual clip, but I find it and send it to you. But yeah, man, oh, thank oh. you for pulling up on me, man. Because uh, like you, I said, uh, I'm about to is an ideology that that i've been actually teaching to women because um i coach women but all all together is the same ideology that i can teach to men and i'm going to end all this red pill bullshit and i'm going to replace it with a new ideology and i need you and a lot of other mother uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of other brothers in this space to have my mm -hmm. back so we can push masculinity and get away from this woman hate culture and because you know i ain't going nowhere i you know i'm cool with you know <laughs> ask for a bro or whatever but i am here because i'm one of the people who are open and somewhat qualified because i'm not a therapist to actually get these women in check and put them on the right path where they can stop being so goofy and shit you know what i'm saying so so many men wouldn't have to go to another country to find a good woman so i'm on i'm i'm over here in america holding it down you know Hold what i'm saying down. and you over in colombia holding it down mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i and I, it's kind of funny that you would say that because the standards that you are setting for a black man as an example first of, and then secondly uh uh as far as a person that's encouraging and giving examples as well uh uh i do the same thing here it's kind of funny you and i are two different continents but we have the same mindset yeah. our, our brand centers around uh the family unit nobody mm -hmm. can come to come to our channel or come to get any information from us in regards to anything other than positive masculinity if you're going to be a traveler, positive femininity, if you're going to be a traveler as well. Now, as for those that are out there, just that are travelers and they're mongering and we have nothing to do with that. But if you come to Love Crossing Borders, you will always see men and women coming together, trying to showcase positivity and family dynamics uh, 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 on the other side of the world, as well as what you guys are doing back home in the States. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. But shout out to you, man. I'm a, about to just gonna talk to my people before I end it. Oh, yeah, let me but let you go. Always have a great man. afternoon. All right, have Let's a good one, man. You too. All right. So uh I hope y'all enjoyed the show. And uh shout out, like I said, shout out to Shannon Sharp, shout out to Cat Williams, and shout out to uh these other comics that did not sell out, did not wear a dress stay up we are supporting you and we are not supporting these other dudes wearing dresses they can kiss our ass and we got to bring masculinity back and we got to hold it down 
for the actual masculine men because these dudes got to go. Can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. Album. Men all pause when I walk into the room. The men all pause. No, we done with that shit. We done with that shit. We taking masculinity back. And if you're not with it, you you just going to get pushed to the side. That's really it. But um, let me drop the link. Just in, if anybody wants to come up before I go, <clears throat> y'all are welcome to come up before I go real quick. So real quick, if anybody wants to come up before I go, hit the link. Hurry up. Hit the link. Hurry up. Hit the link. Because, like I said, from a community standpoint, we got to hold it down. You feel me? We got to hold it down for our community. So I'm going to give y'all a good four. I'm, I'm going to give y'all a good two, three minutes to come up. If anybody wants to come up and say what they got to say. And well, what the hell is this? Oh, I forgot what the damn video was. Hold on, y'all. Oh, I didn't even bring it up. Mm, oh. Yeah, so for those who didn't see this part, this is how the show started earlier. Evan told you it won't go wear no dress until they offered him the dress. Evan told you it won't go wear no dress until they offered him the dress, and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision, duh, but you didn't make it. I don't know if you've had this, but I've had people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something. Hit the like button, y'all. Hit the like button, y'all. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. I didn't want to do. And what? Just, you've been off, yeah. Oh, they're in the room. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. That was my way of yes, chewing you. Like it's open dialogue. Yeah. You want me to keep talking about it? By, by all means, let's, we can keep talking about anything. But <laughs> what you talking about, Kevin? What what you shushing her for, Kevin? Like what, what what's going on, Kevin? Like what happened, Kevin? Like oh, what what is that? Why are you on an interview trying to shush people? Like what you doing, sir? Kevin told you he won't go wear no dress until they offered him the dress, and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision, duh, but you didn't make it. I don't know if you've had this, but I've had people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something I didn't want to do. And what? Just, you've been off, yeah. Oh, they're in the room. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. That was my way of yes, chewing you. Like, it's open dialogue. Yeah, you want me to keep talking about it? By, by all means, let's, we can keep talking about anything, but. <laughs> but don't do it. Yeah, I just, I just, so I just Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. See, the reason I stopped was because I had seven shows on TV all at once. The only problem is when he stopped stand-up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand-up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand-Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand-up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big. <laughs> What's up, Cliff? What's up, Boston? I'm just shopping around. Mr. Let, Mr. Let Go, how you doing? What's up, brother? How you doing? I just want to say thank you for what you do. You know, guys like you talking on these platforms, definitely putting the word out there. A thank you, people, man. A lot of people need to hear this message. I mean, at the end of the day, um, this kind of thing is pretty, pretty intense. And um, I think he put a lot of people out there. He, put, he made people know that they're on notice and that um, you can't just go around, you know, acting a certain way and make pretend that things don't operate the way that they do. Right, right. You know, they operate a certain way and he just was, he just wanted to make sure that he was clear 
and mm-hmm. you know, un, unequivocal, like that this is the way things are going, and that when you see certain people that are put up, are promoted, or pumped up, it's not by mistake. It's all by design. It's all by design, right? And we got to boycott these bitches. We're yeah. boycotting bitches in 2024. They gotta have my headphones on. <laughs> This message is not for everybody. Right, right. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. Like I said, man, I'm just here for my community and trying to build it back up, man, you know, because it's been tore tore down in so many different ways, and I'm sick of it, you know? No, I'm glad we have these platforms nowadays because it's it's obviously, and you see by the numbers, obviously Mm -hmm. the message message needs to be heard, and a lot of people are starting to gravitate in this direction because they see things Mm -hmm. going in the wrong direction, so... I agree. You know, I can't tell you how many times people professionally, privately, I'm starting to see people echo a lot of these things. You know, I didn't maybe a year, two years ago, I didn't hear that. Now mm-hmm. I hear more than ever, and it's only yeah. getting worse and worse. Maybe it's because I'm listening to more, or mm-hmm. maybe it's I don't know. But I see more people talking about it in, in my private life. I see people talking about it at work. I mean, it's these conversations are being had. You know, and they have to they have to be had at this point because things are just getting out of control. Yeah, it is. Okay. And I'm going to bring it back into control by taking control. That's the way. But thank you, brother. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. You too. Y'all hit the like button. Hit the like button uh contribute to the channel cash app is rolling at the bottom of the screen dollar sign aaron 1000 drop a super chat tell me what you're thinking i dropped the link if you want to come up tell me what you're thinking what's up Oh, on Facebook, uh, the link only works to come up on the show on YouTube, uh, Bishop Ray Robbins. Everything Cedric and Ricky Smiley ever been in got canceled for not being funny. Ricky sat here and told you that they cut him out of every movie he did. They always had a reason. Like, (laughs) (sighs) (sighs) that's why I'm funny because I'm a happy person. I laugh all day long. I can't even imagine the misery of these bums. <laughs> <laughs> 50 million and he turned it down. Who going to turn down 50 million? Now, I've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times. Four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Uh, Cuz P Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you got God. to tell him no. I, I did. Hell. I did. Oh, See, man. I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can say I'm so freely. Can I need no one? You here, get through no Thank you, sir. Thank you. Come on. Because early on, you was accusing me of being... 
Yeah, man. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, but you know, some of these people... Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Cat, when I come back, I need you. You're my young partner. You're my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We're going to do it together. We're going to do some buddy cop shit. I said, Martin, you got my motherfucking word. Cat Williams went on Club Shay Shay and exposed all the comedians. Let's talk about it. Says Steve Harvey had on a wig this whole time. Basically, Steve Harvey stopped doing comedy because Cat Williams exposed his wig. He had to do <laughs> Steve said that he was homeless at some point. Apparently, he was never homeless. Called him Mr. Potato Head. I mean, he went in on him. Oh, Steve said how his current wife got him to where he is right now. He said that about the first wife. Then he said Cedric the Entertainer stole his joke. He used to hate on Bernie Mac when he was alive. Said that he was built like a walrus. And how is he an entertainer? But he ain't got no specials on Netflix or Tubi. <laughs> He'll know how to see, he'll know how to act, he'll know how to do nothing. <laughs> how are you an entertainer? Okay, I agree with because if you know what comedians go through, they go through a lot to even get a TV show or a movie, whatever. Out the gate, he gets his big role in Hollywood. Oh no, Loki. <laughs> Loki, he's cooking right. I've never seen Shannon so sh what? what do you expect? The guy married a whore. Jesus. And you the one told a guy that writes musical lyrics that he was a genius. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's like, so what, what do you expect? The guy married a whore. Like, what? Oh, Lord. Like, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I mean, married her because she was one. Not he didn't know. He understood that <laughs> he wanted that. He courted that. That's what he wanted to base his well, maybe family she got, she got on. a good heart, though. I know what you're going to say. Don't you say it, Kat. Don't you say it. I'm going to move the conversation. If what I'm saying is not correct, then how does she end up with Pete Davidson? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I mean, uh -oh. that happens all the time. And what if you weren't even good enough for Pete and he leaves you? What do that mean the product was? Oh. I want y'all to think about that for a second, though. I always looked at Kanye West like a cornball, right? He didn't wear a dress, so I ain't got no problem with uh, Kanye West. But this cornball goes out and marries this white woman or whatever she is. And next thing you know, he marries her, puts babies in her, and she does like she always does, gets rid of the dude, don't let him see his kids, and she gets with drug addict Pete Davidson. And then he don't even want to be with her. Well, according to what everybody has said, including Kat, Pete Davidson dumped her because he just, like nobody's stupid enough, unless your name is Kanye West, to actually take uh, Kim Kardashian seriously. She's a whore. So, Pete Davidson, even though he, you know, he he has a drug habit, he said it himself, he's still not dumb enough to be in a relationship with a whore. No, he just wanted to hang around a little bit. You know, she probably bought him some stuff or whatever, you know, because she has a, a billion dollars or whatever, played with her and got on about his business. What a real dude's supposed to do. So, yeah, I want y'all to think about this. Kanye West married a woman that a drug addict didn't even want after he got done with her. That shit is crazy. Let's keep going. <clears throat> no, I don't, I don't support or villainize Kanye because I don't understand what it is we want from him. I don't know why we look at a basketball player and say, he didn't score no hockey goals this whole season. <laughs> he don't play hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye don't say nothing I can agree with. Yeah. Okay. I, he was the weird guy in the beginning with the pink sweaters right. when we met him. Like, yeah. what do you think? You're the weird guy. To a beat of your own drop. This, this dude started a church and kept cussing. Nobody in black church said nothing. You would have thought all the. I don't. I, don't, I ain't know why I can't. I don't. And the truth has got to be told. I don't even look at things I don't want because if I look at it, I'll have it. That's how favored I am by God. Be careful what you're looking at. 
Tory Lanez and Meg. What, what would you take on that? Because I know you get, you got to take on everything. I know it's, you a, it's a difficult position because somebody's not going to tell the truth. And the truth has got to be told. In all circumstances, the truth has got to be told. So if you don't want to say she shot her, then you shot her. And that's the end of that. Wow. They got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. Why Earthquake not in movies? Because he's illiterate. He can't oh. read. And they found that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. I ain't working with Corbin. You ain't got to work with me, guy. I ain't mad at you no more. You I ain't mad at you. I, Whoa. I, I didn't even read when he was on Black Jesus set. Bubba can't read, though. Damn. I <clears throat> Y'all remember the show Black Jesus? They saying the man couldn't read the damn strip script on Black Jesus. Shout out to Corey Holcomb. I ain't heard that before. Little oh. TV. I love to have Cat Williams in it, bro. I ain't seen Cat Williams in a, since I came home, bro. Cat Williams a real nigga, bro. I came home, I ain't have nothing, bro. Cat Williams called me to his show and uh, gave me front row seats, bro. Called me to his show. And when I was leaving the show, I thought he threw me some weed in the car because it was wrapped up in a towel. But it was fifteen thousand dollars, bro. And I and, and bro, when I see him, I'm gonna return the favor, bro. Whatever I got in my pocket, bro. Like, shout out to Cat Williams, man. I've heard so many different people talk about how good Cat Williams is to people, man. How generous of a person he is. How good he treats women. That dude <laughs> did something for me, brother. I get emotional talking about it, bro. Like, I really needed it at the time. And I wouldn't stay in nowhere. I mean, I was staying at a hotel with my kids in downtown New Orleans. I ain't even have a nowhere to stay there yet, bro. And, uh, no, I had just got, I had just got the house. I was at the house. I had just rented the house from baby. And, uh, Cat Williams gave me $15,000, bro, all hundreds, bro. I thought it was weed. My boy City say, ooh, that, that, nigga, that nigga gave you some weed. That nigga threw it back there. I unwrapped a towel with the rubber band. That bitch was $15,000, bro. There was a, um, he said on Club Shay Shay, shout out to Shannon Sharp again. Uh, he said on Club Shay Shay, that um Shani Sharp asked him, why do you have women give your comedians money randomly? And he said that because it it doesn't feel the same when you're out here doing well and your mentor or the person that has you here gives you the money versus it just randomly happening, you know? And and he was like, I can't be everywhere at one time. So he had different comedians performing, you know, just on tour doing different things. Right. And once he hears that one of his comedians that he put on did a good job, he has sent one of his female assistants to give the man like five or ten thousand dollars just randomly like boom. And he does that on a normal basis. And that's the reason why I mess with Cat Williams, because he don't need the notoriety. He don't need um, he actually <clears throat> also uh, it was a point where the Migos was going through some problems financially and he just randomly gave the Migos some money. And then when. Um, excuse me, Shannon Sharp asked him about it, he denied it. He stopped for a second. He was just like, you know what? There's no way in this world that they would need something from me when they had the people around them. So I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, yo. That was just beautiful. So, yeah, I, I, I got a lot of love for um, 
Cat Williams, man. I always did. So, yeah. But I'm about to get up out of here, y'all. But before I go, make sure to buy my card game. And thank you to the people who have already bought. Get up at a coffee shop and play this fun dating card game. We'll have fun and see if we're compatible all at the same time. Ooh, what's the name of the game? It's called Deeper Discussions. Mmm, I'm down. Okay, meet you at six. Fellas, buy this car game. Ladies, buy this car game. Buy about two or three car games and give them out for Christmas. The main reason why people can't stay together isn't because they don't like each other no more. It's actually because their present family issues come up or their past family issues come up. But when you play Deeper Discussions, you'll be able to understand a person's family issues up front. This game can be played with either two people or an entire group. So have fun. Question number one, name a time when money was the main factor why a relationship went bad. Deeper Discussions Dating Edition. Again, these cards are good for vetting a potential boyfriend, Candidate. a potential girlfriend, a potential husband, a potential wife. The texture of these cards are so soft and silky, by the way. Like, like they ain't gonna like get really wore out. Durable. After you.